North American stock futures little change this morning ahead of the non-farm payrolls number for September uh, out momentarily here. We'll get you the number as soon as it comes across, uh, expecting 500,000 uh, futures. As I said, uh, little changed ahead of this number. Uh, so the number, guys, 194,000. So 194 versus 500 expected. So that is quite a large miss uh, as far as uh, non-farm non payrolls again for September, uh, 194 versus 500,000 expected there. So we'll see uh, how the market reacts to this. The report, uh, again, viewed as a key economic gauge for the Fed when it comes to when and maybe even if they will start tapering uh, their spending, their current spending. So we'll uh, touch on the futures here coming up. Uh, remember, we got the weekly jobless claims numbers out yesterday, 326,000 versus 345,000 that were expected. Uh, positivity came back in, though, uh, once Washington uh, announced a deal to raise the debt ceiling to get through to December. The Dow was up 340 points yesterday, or about 1%. We had the S&P and the NASDAQ both in positive territory as well. Tesla shares on watch this morning doing nothing after the annual shareholder meeting and after that big move we saw in the afternoon yesterday. And of course, we'll touch on Camber Energy leading the volume leaders once again in the pre-market here. It's Friday, October 8th, 2021. TraderTV.live starts now. Yeah, negative uh, reaction there for the futures. We are still positive, but uh, off the highs now, the market trying to bounce here around uh, some key levels, guys, for uh, the S&P anyways. 0.2 there uh, on the board, the Dow 0.07. You can see uh, TSX futures back to flat, completely flat. They were up about 0.3 uh, early on this morning. Uh, relatively unchanged at the bottom there for Bitcoin and Ethereum as well. Uh, again, if you missed it, if you're just joining us here, the uh, non-farm payrolls number a huge uh, miss, guys. So we were expecting 500,000. I'll scroll back down to 830. Here we go. Uh, we were expecting 500,194, the actual number. So, uh, yeah, that's not what uh, everyone was expecting for this, guys. No, although you would think that... Um Look, if it had been a good number, the idea would be that strengthening and right. then, taper, I, I, and then tapering it sooner, right now. and then tapering sooner, which makes some sense to me. So, uh, a bad number here, like the bad news is good news, is the kind of thing that would make sense fundamentally. I mean, gold actually uh, moves up on that, so uh, we'll have to see how it shakes up. Look, a lot of times that first move uh, in the futures isn't necessarily the big one. Uh, there's a lot. We're gonna have a lot to get to to round at, out the end of the week. I was just sort of joking that this week it's. Uh, instead of Trader TV, it could be like Camber TV or something like that because every single day it's the volume leader and that's just not going to change today. So same thing. Uh, like five or six people have asked the same question about CCXI. Uh, I'm not short this stock. I, and I've said it like two or th a couple of times. I'm going to just like read it out of the way, just out of the gate. They got a big approval and if you look at what happened when there was concern over the approval for this stock, it flushed from $50. So the fact that it didn't test that has me has a little bit of pause for me because it's not really it didn't fill the gap all the way to the area that it expected I expected to that's probably the only reason I'm, I'm not in it now I'll be looking at Tesla even though it hasn't moved as Brendan mentioned uh, we will see uh, pos possibly some action around that 800 number but uh, let's see how the week ends off well I hope uh, Russell Fink uh, Russell Russell finger Russell Wilson's finger I is, know I don't care better. I'm facing the guy I mean the guy I'm facing has DK Metcalf he has Daryl Henderson Pasha like give me a break well, he had every touchdown yeah he had every game. touchdown so that's really a good start for I me should. and then I started Alex Collins right out of nowhere and that didn't work out well he'll I mean he's fine he's 10 points or 11 points which is not great but um yeah so I punched my ticket already here um on the cues Brendan and um you know I I think like what Neil was saying there you know a worse number um, means that tapering becomes uh, hopefully a thought of the past and, and just not happening sooner. I don't think we're anywhere close to raising any kind of rates anyways uh, in, this, in this environment. So let's just see. I'm using this bottom yesterday that we made in the queues. We made it here yesterday early at 9.30, and then we made it again near, near the very bottom uh, of the day there. And then if you look over here, this is what we're doing. So right now we punched the ticket long. We're going long early. Then we averaged into this price here, and now we're starting to go back to the upside. So a nice little 25, 30 
50% win rate here uh, on the Triple Qs, which of course is the NASDAQ. So we're, I told you we're trying to play the futures game a little bit here. So we'll stick with the equity, uh, not the actual futures contract because it won't show it at the bottom. We've talked about this, but here we go. 40 cent winner here all the way to the upside. We'll see if we can take something out around 364. But so far, Brendan, we're raining down a little bit of cash. We'll start the day off uh, on a positive note here and uh, take it out. Well, here we go. 60, 70 cents now uh, in the money. The future seem to like this number, Brendo. Yeah, the, uh, the idea here again, guys, if you're wondering, obviously uh, a, a big miss as this is. 194 versus 500 is going to push away uh, that tapering talk because the guys were saying there. Uh, new graphic alert. Uh, what do you guys think? I like it. We'll, uh, we'll get into uh, some headlines here for you this morning, moving around uh, the market. Yeah, well, one more time. There's a huge delay for some reason. There we go. What? Is. Are those like bullet holes that happen right at the end? Or I don't something? know. One, I more like, time. one more time. And let's do it one more time. Yeah, what? I don't know. That's it's, it's on fire, apparently. So uh, here we go. Some headlines to digest. Obviously, the jobs number going to be the big one for today. I saw this note as well this morning. Uh, inflation back on the table. Uh, and yeah, they're talking about bringing on Q3 earnings season, guys, because that is going to start with some big banks next Wednesday, including uh, JP Morgan, I read as well. So uh, we got the jobs number down here today. The Fed's going to do nothing now after this number, we would expect. And then earnings back on the table for uh, next week. So finally getting back into uh, some actual data points here. Again, JP Morgan set to lead things off uh, Wednesday, guys, for the banks. Yeah, that's the other thing you could have done. It's like long future short banks there because that's exactly what happens here. So JP, look, it's not going to matter. It's only pre-market, but JP just went down 150. Basically the same thing you'd expect. If you're going to be lessening, whenever tapering happens, it's the timeline that matters for raising rates. So uh, regardless of when that's going to happen, the later they taper, the later they raise rates is the way the theory goes. And if that's what this print is going to do to the market to the upside, then you know, you can see the banks sort of come down off of that, which could be an opportunity uh, if that actually extends further for some of the banks. I'm kind of looking at JP around that 66, 67 range if this were to get out of hand. So one thing definitely to watch there uh, with the banks in, in front of those earnings, at least for the day trade, given the reaction of the market right now. Yeah, we have this trade right now, and um, look at the cues, man. We are huge in the money right now. A dollar fifty in the money on this Nasdaq right here, so that's starting to rip to the high side uh, right now. We are going to watch out. You talked about banks leading the way. Look, these banks are already hot fire, right? And this number may be better for them. So we'll wait to see uh, where the market. Wow, look at this. Wow, what a what a, what a win there uh, on the triple cues. You can see that at the bottom uh, of your screen. But look at the banks; they've just been absolutely on fire the last couple of days. Even from a 163 print here on J.P. Morgan up to 170, 171. So uh, get that away from me. Um, all the way up here is a big one. So you know what? I I only hold J.P. Morgan. I did sell some. Oh no, where's my daily chart? Uh, okay, I don't have a daily chart up, but um, I did sell some J.P. Morgan. Let me call it up here at 156. Uh, to buy, I think it was PaySafe, so that hasn't worked out too well. Uh, but I'm still pretty heavy into JP Morgan. It's the only one I own. But look at this. This is what I'm trying to show you. We're taking out the tops here. 168. We've just busted through. So let's see if we can hold some of that. I mean, all the, wow, look at the queues are just going nuts here. The market is absolutely on fire and we are ripping right now. Um, but you can see right here, I just get nervous when stocks are at these highs heading into an earnings report. So I don't know. I'm looking to trim out some bank, but we'll see what happens. Let JP Morgan lead the way. I think it's, is it, um, does J.P. Morgan lead? I can't remember if it's WFC or one of them, which one comes out first, but we'll find out what's going on. But right now, I mean, these triple Qs, guys, off to the races. We're looking to take out yesterday's high, man, 365.66. So a big win here, needless to say. Um, and a better jobs number. We tweeted out about this. This is what we're looking for. I said anything above zero, and your boy was going long. So here it is right now. We'll hit the cowbell for this. Hopefully you guys are along with me. Uh, miss means better for stocks, obviously. So big bounce there for the market. All right, Neil, I know you're very excited about this. So, uh, let's get it out of the way and talk about it right now. Here's Sundial, guys. Sundial uh, picking up this Alcana uh, up 15% pre-market on decent volume, it's worth saying as well. Uh, Alcana CLIQ, it's listed in uh, Toronto, cash and stock here. It's been a while since we've had Sundial on the list, man. And if you're wondering why, why is Sundial buying um, an you guys don't know what Alberta is unless you're Canadian, but it's a province in Canada. Uh, so a, a liquor some Americans might some know. Americans that's, might that's know. Oh, oh, my bad. My bad. Sketchy comments. Okay, sketchy. fine. Some people might. Some of you might know about Alberta. Others might not. Um, so you're asking why would they be buying a, a, a liquor retailer 
in Alberta. They do have a subsidiary that it's a cannabis retailer as well. So that's why you're getting the purchase. It's all stock in this particular case. So you know, I guess expanding their footprint uh, in, into Canada. Sundial, for now, is doing that thing that Sundial does every time that it goes up, which is not really continue the move. Uh, so I'm going to be watching this one today. I got like, I'm looking at 74 and, you know, I should start with the daily. I'm looking at this 74 area, which had been a recent resistance and it's turning into a bit of support here. Next level up is probably an 85 and we're nowhere near that. Like we can't even run away from this 74 area. Every time it tries to bounce off of it, you know, you're sort of rejecting the pre-market highs over and over again. Volume's at 16 million. However, that's that's actually not a lot pre-market for Sundial. I remember when it was doing its squeeze thing, and that thing was, you know, you could be seeing three times this by this time in the pre-market. So we'll see if it's going to be 100 million today or not. But, you know, my, my inclination is usually to fade it. There, could, there is a potential support area around the 74. Uh, but for now, they just continue to want to test it in the market here today. And remember, it is an all, like, they are diluting here. This is an all-stock deal. I don't think that CLIQ is going to be much of a trade today. And if you are looking at that, well, it's just going to follow Sundial anyways. All right, so um, yeah, shout out to uh, you know the cannabis space there starting to get um, you know hopefully a little bit heated uh, for Sundial, but obviously you talked about that as an alcohol there, and you know just trying to diversify. I think that's not a bad spot um, for Sundial. So we are out right now. Well, we still have a little small piece here, but we let the futures run all the way to yesterday's high, like we said. It failed at that high. There's that wick off top right there that we talk about all the time with the bottom and the top. It hits it right at these support levels up here. Um, I guess it's resistance on the upside there. So that's a big, big move. Huge move. I mean, 363 up to 365.50. That's $2.50. We put that in our pocket. And now we're holding on to a small lotto here. This is a very small position. 5% of the, whole, of, of the trade we have left on. So, you know, out half there and basically out half there. And now we'll wait to see where the last little small piece goes to. But I also want to welcome a new member uh, to our family. We won't put her on screen until I, I talk to her about it. Um, but Natalie, thank you so much for joining our team. And it should be a fun ride. Yes, Natalie is in the building for... Uh, the first time today, so we're all very excited about that. Um, let's talk about this McQuery, guys. MIC, more of a uh, market structure uh, type of idea this morning or strange move uh, idea this morning. Uh, MIC in New York down, yeah, 91%. This thing was $40.80 at the close yesterday on the daily chart. Here is why. $37.39 per share dividend. So X dividend today. Uh, I mean, this is an airport infrastructure uh, type of company where they, they operate airports and maintain airport grounds in the U.S. But uh, that's, uh, that's a lot of a dividend, guys. Yeah, and look, it's a... Uh... And it's, 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 this is what they do because they have one on, just, on the daily chart here. They actually did an $11 dividend. Uh, this would have been back in Chan. And, and, you'll see, and you'll see the drop there as well. So it's, it's one of these situations. And I think the teaching moment, if there is one here, because at the end of the day, we're all here to learn and sort of understand more, is when you see, and believe me, I'm going to say this, and you're like, it's ridiculous. No one would ever trade something like this blind. Trust me when I tell you I've seen traders do this before. Uh, you should always attempt to know what's going on. And if, and if you can't find the news, um, just, and it doesn't make sense, then assume that you're missing something and dig until you find it and you don't have to trade unless you do. Because it would be really easy to look at this chart and just assume, oh yeah, well, of course it's just some, some gigantic... Uh, some gigantic split or something along those lines. You know, like the, your mind goes to that place, especially when it's not doing like cr crazy volume or anything like that. So you should absolutely never trade blind. You get these extreme things uh, time and time again. How many times in the chat in the morning? And I know you guys see this because I'm in there, uh, you know, like seven or whatever, and, and there'll be questions. Why is this stock up? Uh, whatever percent. Oh my goodness, I'm up a thousand percent on this, uh, and it just was a, re a reverse split, or why is this down and it was just a split? In this particular case, uh, you know, you have Brendan, you have us to give you the news, but you shouldn't rely on that. You should always dig yourself uh, to make sure that you're not trading blind and you want to make sure you have those goods. Look, sometimes it matters. Uh, the fundamentals or, or the reasons behind these things. And you wouldn't want to get caught thinking, oh my goodness, auto short, this stock is in the tank, or whatever reason you'd have to make a play off a gapper when it's just a simple dividend. And it's not going to necessarily do much of anything today. 
All right, all right. I just told you guys, I got you guys with this uh, Shiba Inu. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll bite. Um, it's because I'm on this, this stock. We'll call it a stock, <laughs> but it's not a stock. Um, I'm, you know, I'm on this coin, and we did. I did sell out. I took out all. I didn't sell out. I, I, I took out um, what I put in. So I took that out yesterday up here, uh, uh, greater than this three, three milla thousandth of a penny, whatever it is here. I um, mean, I just want to show you guys one thing here on Shiba Inu, just in case you um, are, are looking at this and you're like okay you know where do i get out i know we talked about it yesterday a lot of you have about five trillion of these uh coins and that's not even really uh, that many i guess i mean it is trillion would be a lot but um i, I just want to bring everyone's attention to this the last time shiba inu went absolutely nuts obviously it went here to 0.5 as well but you've stopped out at the same levels back in may that we stopped out yesterday so just watch out for these tops. It looks like 335 here. So 35, sorry, um, on the, again, I don't know what, what this is. Is this is, this is a hundred thousandth, a ten thousandth of a penny there. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, just look at that same level. That's all. So I just want to give everyone's attention that if it does rip up to there, you may want to cash out a little bit more. I know I will be standing in here somewhere uh, to get something out anyways. And then, you know, I don't mind playing this game. But look, big, huge volume increases, the most it's ever had in the last couple weeks. So um, watch out for Shiba Inu here as it is starting to go off here a little bit in the last one minute. You can see, look at this move, man. This is 2-2 uh, two, two to 2-6. Two, so so yeah, that is about a 30 to 40 percent move there uh, in the last half hour. So congratulations to anybody holding that. But I just want to bring everyone's attention to that. Just like Neil and I will talk about stock, I'll talk about the same thing with Cardano, with Bitcoin, with Ethereum, with everything. And that is, is just be very, very careful with these. You have to look back at past levels. It's the same reason why I'm out of queues right now, right? I mean, it's going to show me in it. I'm in 5 percent. I've talked about that. So you guys are going to hear that. Look where we got out. Right in yesterday's high, right? We ticked out to yesterday's high right there on the queues. And then it started to hit the downside again. So to me, that was a no-brainer out. We take that out and we hold on to a lotto, right? I think that's what you need to do with coins as well. Uh, just to confirm, Sean, quickly, uh, Wells Fargo the 14th next week, JP Morgan 13th. So Wednesday, Thursday, we'll get, there's a big batch that's both Wednesday and Thursday. But uh, yeah, 13th and 14th. Uh, Oatly, guys, want to mention uh, this one we saw come to market uh, late last year, I think it was. When was this? Might have been this year. May 20th. Uh, back to the upside here. We've had a few stocks moving around recently on short reports. This was one of them. If you remember going back, I believe it was here. Uh, Spruce Point Capital came out uh, saying they were short this stock. Uh, JP Morgan, guys, this morning, upgrading Oatly, yeah, to overweight on revenue potential. So a uh, nice bump here for OTLY, 7% in the pre-market. So it gets the upgrade after we've already moved 25% off Honestly. the bottom, right? Like the timing of this is amazing. Maybe they're launching a line of gut milk or something like that, a reference none of you guys are going to get, but that's okay because I enjoy it myself. I, I don't know about these. Sometimes why, the timing, would, why would nobody get that reference? I, I don't. I mean, you, I don't, I don't get, get it. it. I, but nobody. Because uh, the show, the, the, that Amazon show I was oh, talking about. Oh, uh, it's only, from a show. only murders in the building. Ah, 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 By the way, ah. only murders in the building is one of the best shows. No, it's on Disney. My bad. Uh, it's one of the best shows on Disney. 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 Yeah, it's on Disney. Hmm. So yeah, you can you can definitely watch it. You might. You no, Black you Widow. It. I think just uh, went free on is, Disney. That is. It was entertaining, is what I will say. But like, it's not like one of the top <laughs> top ten of that Marvel series. I, I can't say top. I don't know if it's that good. Like it's, Mar I love the Marvel series. I don't know if it's one of the best ones, but right, I thought right. it was pretty entertaining. So Fair enough. I would suggest watching, but I would also suggest watch Only Murders in the Building. I'm a huge Steve Martin fan, one of the funniest dudes that ever lived. So uh, check that one out. <laughs> if you don't like it, then you can come yell at me. And he is Canadian, and it's got um, right. Martin Short, who's also Canadian. Boom. Oh, Canada. Oatly, we get these upgrades, and it's already put in, like, it just feels like it's already put in the move. Like it comes from the bottom, goes right into the most obvious resistance area here. Like you get like 1560 right into $16. Okay, so it basically gets the entire gain back and the gap up and, and now you're gonna have this upgrade. It just feels to me like this is the timing of this. This is gonna be a sell the news kind of event and it's not gonna be able to break out through the 16 area. There's no volume in the pre-market on the stock. And you know this would have been interesting if we had gotten this upgrade and you're trading a breakout here at that 14 level I just don't know if I see it, right? So with upgrades and downgrades, you kind of want to look at the timing. What has the stock done uh, going into it? Um, and, and pay very, very close attention to it. Look at the overall trend, uh, things along that line. And it doesn't mean to say that Oatly's a bad company. I don't really know enough about them to, for any kind of a long-term assessment. It's just interesting to me that it's already pulled this move, uh, and now it gets the upgrade here at what looks like a temporary top.
There, are, there, there, there is going to be, um, you know, some pushback on some of these stocks that have been just beat down so much, right? And I think um, Oatly, although I'm not sure what gut milk is, um, Oatly uh, today uh, starting to go, and that's nice. I mean, so anybody that's been in that stock is an opportunity to get out a little bit here as we've uh, retraced back nicely into this area. I think you have the 50-period moving average at 17, so that's a spot that we can also look at there. So a uh, good story for Oatly, but we've only done 80,000 shares on that, so uh, more to come, I feel, on this name uh here today and in the future but hey it's nice to get off that bottom so hopefully some of the stocks i own can do the same thing definitely uh let's go to uh analyst moves guys upgrades and downgrades for uh today merck on here i just noticed uh obviously the big uh vaccine related not vaccine but covid related news story over the past couple of weeks plug power has had a pretty good week a uh, couple of days to the upside uh this aon nicely uh positive uh on the day as well how dare wells fargo downgrade home depot uh, I mean, it's red, but only just. Uh, nothing else terribly. ConAgra reported, I think, as well for uh, CAG this week, guys. It's it, 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 like you said, plug power, and I'm like, why does the chart look almost exactly the same as Oli's? If you pull it to 15, the daily chart's not going to look the same. But uh, yeah, plug power. It's like filling right into this gap here. <laughs> the last couple of weeks at 2670. But you always have to look at the daily as well. And, and plug is trying again. Uh, to break off of this level. Uh, it, it sh the plug is going to get really interesting if it tries to take out this 30. And it's been sitting around in this range for you know the better part of four months, four or five months now. And I think if it can actually get going, that would be fantastic. Um, you know, you know how you want to play clean energy. There's like about a million ways to do it, and maybe there's too many of them, and that's why you're seeing uh, such lackadaisical movement overall. Now, I'm, that Home Depot, yeah, downgrade Home Depot. That's how it's going to be, huh? I like Home Depot. Maybe we're going to get a buying opportunity there, but I'm still waiting around for this plug. The plug 30 day, when it comes, I'll probably be on that breakout uh, unless all hell is breaking loose to the downside in the market. Uh, okay, so I'll, I'll talk a little bit about Merck here. Merck is right at these levels of 80 bucks. Really like that level. I mean, it's held, this is just a 20 minute chart. Uh, you can bring it back to October 1st. It's held $80 all the way here on the downside. So very exciting uh, opportunities. If you can get Merck around 80, uh, you know, we have that big bump up there on their pill. We've talked about that sort of at length here uh, on the show. I think there's a good opportunity, you know, to pick this name up. I still think I like Eli Lilly. I have to look at that chart uh, again before we do anything. But uh, right down there, Merck looks like it's pretty good. And again, uh, on the one minute chart, not doing much here today. It's only done 64,000 shares. I think we have to really wait, and I put this on the sticky note uh, earlier, and we can show it uh, to everybody now that we've gotten, look, we've gotten the report out, so it might not be, you know, too, too, too big of a thing here. But here's the sticky note today. Find me on Twitter, at Trader TV Sean. Um, you're going to see the jobs number will move the market. So I don't really want to look at too many levels. And I talked about that right here. No levels now, right? So thanks for all the retweets and the likes on all this. But Tesla, CEI, Palantir, and Dats are four names that we're going to get to very, very soon. Um, so I'll put the sticky note one more time in the chat. Um, and then you guys can have a look at some of these levels. But we will talk about them all uh, coming up. I just, it's hard right now with the market. I mean, again, we're still 25, 35 minutes. Hello. What time is it? Uh, before the market opens. So, you know, I, I don't want to talk too, too much about Microsoft or Apple's or anything like that until the market does open up. But we're getting much, much closer to that. And let's just keep a look on some of these popular names. I think we're going to go through the watch list uh, now. Uh, not much volume on this one, but worth a mention here, guys. This uh, Hellbiz, recent uh, high flyer HLBZ, up 8.5% here. Uh, this is why Intel's Move It and Hellbiz accelerate global partnerships. So announcing a deal with uh, Move It uh, for HLBZ. Uh, so a heads up on that one again. I think it's only, what is it, 86,000 shares here in the pre-market. So uh, not much yet, but uh, we will keep an eye on that one as well. If you are looking for, my button's not working. There it is. That is not it either, guys. Uh, if you're looking for... What's that? I said sneak peek. Yeah, it is uh, a sneak peek of what is to come this weekend. If you're looking for the watch list, uh, we'll get you the link in the chat. How about that? Uh, there it is. That is the link for the uh, watch list every day, guys. We put it out at 8.30 before we come on absolutely free. All you need is an email address. Let's uh, get into said watch list. We, uh, we'll talk about Tesla here. Uh, if you remember, big move in the afternoon yesterday for uh, Tesla. There was a tweet flying around suggesting that yeah, people wanted a question asked at the annual general meeting about a dividend. And somehow that turned into uh, Tesla's going to announce a dividend. Uh, Tesla did not announce a dividend. And not only that, Elon Musk actually said there are no current plans for a dividend. 
Uh, they did announce, though, they're moving to Texas, which was not a surprise at all. No, I mean, can I say, like, I can say the word, well, whatever, I'm not going to get into what, uh, what, get what Tesla, Elon though. Musk was saying about the state of California last year. Uh, so moving, zero surprise there. Yeah. Uh, what we care about, what we care about here, is is the simple fact that Tesla has been doing really well when it comes to the supply <laughs> supply chain constraints uh, and the chip shortage. They've been kicking butt. They got that fantastic number on deliveries. Um, so you're going to see what happened in yesterday's action. Like it pushed right into uh, the weekly high and then did a hard reversal. So we're still below. We're back below that 800 level. And sometimes with like a nothing, I, don't, I shouldn't call it a nothing event, but you know, sort of like a like a. This was, it was a rumor that pushed it through that 800 level that stalled you at an 805. And it's not to say you should ignore that price action, but to me, that puts the lower highs um, that were in play before all these levels still in play, right? So if I zoom out a little bit, you're going to see like this 800 lower high and then here at like 70, you know, 98, today again at 98. I still see it as one peak through a break of 800 to 807 and then an 800, an 800 lower high floor. You know, because you essentially just spiked up on a rumor. And I do the same thing. If there was like a flash crash or something like that on the downside, it's not to say that that didn't happen, uh, but I would treat it a little bit differently than how we were trading on the actual momentum in the last couple of weeks. So I still think it's got a, a lower high sitting here at that 800 number. Uh, the fact that we get this little bit of a bump in the market, I think it's helping. But look, it tested that 98. And sometimes this is very, very, it's kind of an important thing here. When the futures came up, and you heard Sean talk about why he got out and where, right? So he was trading the Qs. That was 15,000 on the NASDAQ where it stalled. And Tesla ran up as well, and it ran right into that 98 lower high and turned around at that same price. So it didn't even test the 800 level when you had that push into 15,000. So it's a little bit relatively weak uh, if you're going to compare it to the NASDAQ and the overall market. doesn't mean it can't go. If we break 15,000, I'm going to like Tesla for an 800 break. But there's no way that I want that break long unless you are breaking 15,000 because it's showing a little bit of relative weakness in Tesla. I still like buying those 65, 70s if you ever get back down there again for the day trade. But for now, it's all about that price action at the 800 level based on what we see overall in the futures. You want to see follow through there. Uh, for the breakout. Yeah, we called this yesterday when it came to us, and I sort of did the thumbs down there on that dividend, and we talked about why that wouldn't be good uh, for them, and, and I'd stick with it, and, you know, they didn't do it. So uh, we'll wait for 805 here. I like this 805 break on Tesla. It's pretty simple to me. We'll just see if it rockets up here. Like I said, it's hard to talk. Look at the NASDAQ. We're still holding this, so NASDAQ right back to highs, basically. Uh, right now, it's, it's going to be hard to take a Tesla trade if you don't have the market with you, but we've seen what Tesla's been the last couple of days, man, relatively strong. I mean, the market, people talking about the market in this downturn tesla you know saying no thank you to that and straight to the upside so we'll see if tesla takes this out you're up here at 808 we touched 808 the other day um uh, i don't know if that must have been in the pre-market and then we have 805 there as well so that's that's the level that i'm going to look at yesterday's top being taken out 805 clean and we're going to go long so i'm not going to touch it until then if the market does fall i mean neil just covered some levels there 780 786 it, you know in this area i think is worth it 85 86 something like yesterday before we had that uh, bump up there but nothing's changed for tesla they're saying all the right things um no matter what you think of elon musk i mean even even his haters still you know claim that he's a genius really i yep. mean so we'll just see uh, where it goes from here i think the move to texas is a smart one better for employees uh better for tax situation and um let's just see where they go from here and i like tesla i'm a tesla bull and will be probably forever uh it was uh, expected in the sense that you know he was already living there himself i guess as well uh move to uh, austin uh, let's uh, get a check of the overall market here. We'll bring in a room, guys, and uh, have a look at the uh, futures, see what we need to be aware of here after this report. Arun, obviously, as we said, bad jobs report. Might be good for the market, though. Yeah, sometimes uh, bad news is good. Sometimes good news is bad. Uh, this market, the, num the numbers themselves are confusing. because It's all over the place, right? You have a big miss on the number side, on the uh, payroll side, uh, and then you have a big beat on the unemployment rate side. So... A huge different markets confused on what to do. That means you got to stay away for now until they settle in, figure out which direction is better for the market for, for now, at least. Uh, I would just stay out of this market. You can see the movement, right? It doesn't want to go below 90 and doesn't want to go above evens, right? So 4,400 even, we're sitting here. We've been as high as what, 44.7 or 8 or 750 or something like that. And then we've been as low as 82 or 83 
on the bottom end. So we're stuck in the middle of the market. We're trying to find a range. There's a lot of movement to the upside, a lot of movement to the downside. A couple of levels that I would keep in mind though, soft level below 80, meaning see how it trades. If we can get below 80 and stay below 80, then maybe open up some shorts. Uh, that was a level I've had in mind since yesterday. The other one uh, was put in late in the session, which was would be for me 44.25, which would be near the high of the day from yesterday. So those are the two wide levels I can work with, at least for now I can see. But I do want to caution you on the 4425 area. That's going to be dependent entirely on how it trades up there. There is some other activity. I would think there's a, there's a, uh, I believe a 50, uh, 50 DMA sitting up there. Um, may bring in some program activity uh, if we cross the 25 and into the 30. So it all depends on how we trade once we pass 25, if uh, that's a situation that we need to take care of today. Now, to the downside, I think that's a little bit more clear. That would be the preferable drop. Uh, if we move to the downside, it kind of opens up the trade a little bit, maybe back into the 50s or so, 43.50, 43.60, somewhere around there. That's probably the better trade. But for now, though, as you can see, the market's bouncing everywhere uh, up and down. That means stay out, maybe the open brings some more clarity on what this market's going to do. But for now, we are up 40% on the ES and 0.6% uh, on the NASDAQ. Yeah, going to be uh, wide range today. Thanks, Arun. We'll check back in again on uh, Monday. Let's uh, talk about Camber Energy, guys. Yeah, number two on the list today. Uh, hard to avoid after the past couple of days and the past couple of uh, sessions worth of volume that we've seen on this. Uh, gapping above two bucks here. What are we looking at? Wishing that it hadn't gapped above two dollars. Not not uh, CEI. Yeah, you know, like CEI. Like I'm happy for everybody that, that has the long position in it, of course. But you know, we, we're happy to see others make money. But we really wanted. I'm going not, short right We now. wanted a two dollar break. Um, you can look at what it, what it would have been like here today. A couple of highs there. I had a little bit of a tester scalp trade up here. Um, but there is there's more resistance that I thought would have gotten tested in this move. It's close to that 260 area previous support. Didn't quite get there, but then yesterday it did fall shy of turning at what I thought was going to be a $2 level. So that's, this feels like it's going to get put in uh, maybe on the downside again. I think that's where you're looking for support. It's going to be around $190 uh, to $2. It does feel like it wants to test that uh, on Camber. Had this already gone to like 250 260 I probably would have dug into something in terms of the short side trade. And it was a little bit early on, and I got a little quick scalp in there, and that's just about it. So I'm not in it right now. If it pops up right at the open for that 930 play, a lot of times what I'd be doing is saying, okay, it's a pop and fade uh, type of idea. Like if it doesn't take out the high, you'd be looking for a short somewhere in front of it with a tight stop. Because I think it's more like a 250 to 260 top, I think you're waiting around for that level. And my gut tells me that um, there's probably other day traders that are thinking along the same lines. If it can hold the line on a higher low at about two bucks, I think it's worth a bounce long there. Uh, so I'd be ready to get on the bid in front of it. You guys all remember, if you're watching the show, then you're definitely going to remember what happened at a dollar. Um, it, it never got to that dollar. The times it was a good bounce are the times when it didn't get to the level, right? They stopped at 105, stopped at 106, uh, even one time I think at 103, and then it started to rally. So I'd expect the same thing in front of that $2 level. You want to see it bounce in front of it. If it gets there, you probably don't like the long, is my gut feeling, like that old 102 long. Uh, so I'll probably try to only go long in front of it, like at 5 at 6. I'd still have a $2 stop, but I'd rather catch the falling sword the first time and hope it never gets to that stop level. So CI is one of the only names uh, on our watch list today, and I think I'm just saying congrats to all the longs. I mean, anybody that hammered this thing uh, down near that dollar, I mean, you get a beautiful uh, double up here, plus more there. I think we could short it into 350, but then if it, sorry to 250, um, but then if 250 breaks, I'm just gonna wait for it to take out three. I mean, I don't even really want to dance in between 250 uh, and three dollars. So I, I just want you know that's something that I'm looking at uh, right now. I don't really want to be involved in this area right here. I, I'm not sure what it's gonna do, but I am pretty sure that if we come up to three bucks again and take this out, then honestly, next stop might be four. Like I just think we take out all of this. You know, this was in the you know, then the huge tank. So let's wait to see what happens. If we could take out three bucks, which is right here, then I think we go we go higher and higher and higher. So I don't know. We'll wait. I'm going to take a, a close short into 250 just because it's 250. Like, you know, you had some 266 there. You had 250 back down uh, into here. So we'll short it around this area, but it'll be a very, very quick hitter uh, if it does, if I do get short. Like, it either hits me out at 251 or we can hold it back down to two bucks again. But that's going to be the only short that I have uh, on Camber. I do want to test it right here a little bit. If we do break below, this will not be a big trade, but we'll have some fun with it. Um, and, and again, we, we, won't, we, won't, uh, we won't ride this for too long. But if we do break this 220 right here on the downside, I think it's worth a very, very small short. I'll take like 
25% short of the normal position that I would have, and then we'll see where it goes from there. But for right now, man, I mean, I really think we, we actually... You know, now that I'm saying this 250 short, I mean, we, we may just blow out through here, uh, 240, 245, and then just keep on going. So we'll see. It's looking a lot stronger than I thought right now off that 220 bounce. So yeah, Camber Energy is going to be on watch again, man. Already 65 million shares. We did a billion yesterday. We've done a billion a couple times. So uh, that obviously is looking like it's going to be, you cannot believe I'm ignoring AMD. Wow, uh, Gerban, I, I, I feel that uh, that is definitely, you got my attention, so congratulations. But uh, yeah, we don't ignore AMD. I mean, I, I didn't put anything on the watch list today for, you know, big cap tech. I talked about why. It's because the number came out. I'd rather trade the Qs. I said anything above positive, and we were going long. That's, again, on the sticky note as well. So uh, we'll wait to see what happens. But Or it's actually on the video that I made. Uh, hopefully you guys can see that video. Uh, I can post, I'll post that link up as well uh, on the chat. If you want to see a little bit of a, um, a back, a back uh, story here of the show, you can see, here we go, I take a little video here, and you can see uh, the behind the scenes look there uh, for Trader TV Live. But anyways, AMD, I love AMD, man. Um, let's just see where it goes. I think 105.50 is a great little support uh, for AMD. So if we get back down to there, we're going to go long on AMD. But until the market opens up, I'm going to wait to see uh, how these stocks react. Uh, to the number, this is a big day. All right, uh, we touched on, uh, Sean, you mentioned uh, uh, cryptocurrencies there a little bit. Uh, Bitcoin guys coming off of uh, 56,000, we touched uh, late in the day yesterday and overnight back below 55,000. But I uh, just saw this one, HUT8. Uh, there's a few, BTBT again, very active uh, in the pre-market, 2% here for HUT8. Uh, Craig Hallam uh, with a price target ray, uh, raise for uh, HUT, but uh, Bit Digital, BTBT, another one that went crazy earlier in the week on a low float. BTBT. Yeah, BTBT was a, that was was a, good a fun, stock. It's that definitely was a good stock. stock and a fun runner. Uh, it got all the way to this 1250. If we get up there again today, usually the thing that you want to watch here is just check out the key levels. Are we resisting some you know, some key levels? Of course, uh, like Ethereum is resisting 37,000 right now. You know, Bitcoin, it, we broke the 50, 55 and you know got to like 56 or at least close enough to it anyways. Oh, we know it did break 56. And then we're back to the downside. So below that 55, that lower high. And you will see outsized moves, right? Like in that same regard, BTBT's pulled 10% back from this high. Uh, so you got to think about it in this regard. Like it's not; these are not going to follow each other um, one to one. I think that's part of the problem it, in trading the equity. You have to follow the key levels, but at the same time, it can be easier technically just to be in uh, the actual cryptocurrency that you want to track itself. All that being said, if you're if, if BTBT comes to 1250 and we haven't made a new high in Bitcoin, it does feel like a bit of a fade. Um, I do have it's weird. Like I have some data that miss, is missing on my charts at times, and you'll see it just there. It is. It actually just filled in. So I was going to say, you do have some support down at 1050 here, uh, but if it, put, if it touches 1250, I hate to say it, I'm probably going to be on the short side of BTBT. Uh, the other day, and I want to come just for a quick second to talk about Silvergate, and this is only, only because this had a bit of a squeeze going on onto it, where it pushed all the way to $165. It was an oversized move. It started happening before, like, it was just way too much in, in regards to how much your crypto was moving. Uh, and you see it got almost to this 170 mark. Uh, candidly, I, I'm a shareholder. I sold it. I'm like, I, well, I'm almost everything out uh, when it got to that 150 mark. It's now baselining at 150. And as this consolidates, uh, my fear would be if there, is a, if there is a strong pullback to say like 50,000, if there was any kind of a dip, this stock could really come down heavily through 150. And you, know, you could easily see like $10, $12 worth of a move. Uh, but you'd want to make sure that the overall you know, crypto market is going with you. Most of that move was upsized, and it's about 10% short interest, and it's been increasing. And I would fear that the downside could come in relatively quickly if there was any kind of a pullback in crypto. This could fall. Supports like at $120, $125 on this one, which is a big move if 150 were to break. You know what's been pretty hot fire has been Coinbase. Uh, looking back there, you were just talking about it, and I was like, what the heck? Uh, Coinbase, a nice, I mean, if we, if we zoom in here, I mean, it's a nice move. It was just, was just $230, so I don't know. That's, you know, 10% up here in, in about a week. Uh, I know the market's been rebounding, so it shouldn't be that much of a surprise. There are a lot of stocks that are up like this, but for Coinbase to be up here, that's pretty nice. I mean, I, I probably I'll sell. Next time we get around this 280, I am stuck long. I'll find out the exact price. Um, I bought it initially on this dip back in, but I think 
I'll find out. I can't remember. It's been a long time since I bought this name. So, um, yeah, we're going to watch out for Coinbase here. Only 35,000 shares. But uh, if you look at, and again, these charts, like, they're always go missing for me here. Uh, there's that. Here it is. Here it is. Here Here's a 20-minute right here. Um, if you're going to notice, I think any sort of a dip back down in here in the 248, 247, something like that for Coinbase over the last couple of days, a little bit of barcoding happening uh, right here. So I think you got some dip buy opportunities around 247, 248 if Coinbase does give up something here today. I like that trade. Um, and then as far as BTBT, I mean, we were trading that uh, when it was moving through 10 and then upside again. Watch out for these 12s to break. For me right now on BTBT, uh, we're just going to wait for it a bit digital. We'll, you know, we'll wait for it to come back through 11 or so. It doesn't really follow. I mean, it gets going when crypto gets going, but I'm not super, super excited uh, about BTBT. Like I keep saying, I'd rather just trade the physical coins. Uh, watch the CCXI, guys, starting to get going back to uh, day highs as well. Uh, let's talk uh, COVID-19 once again on the vaccine front. We uh, were talking about when Merck came out with that uh, pill on the treatment side of things, the significance of it being an oral application versus uh, through an IV drip or uh, other uh, means. So uh, Vaxart comes out with positive data on an oral pill form COVID-19 vaccine aftermarket yesterday. So this is a vaccine, not a therapeutic in the same way that Merck uh, saw that big pop last week. But... 4.8% uh, here for Vaxart. Another one kind of fading off, though. Yeah. yeah. Like, what? It's just, it's giving it all back. And I'm like, ugh. And it's on low volume, too. Like, if, if Vaxart had been doing more volume, I think I would have been in this uh, around 770 uh, this morning. But it's just the volume's basically not there. So it's just drifting back into the downside. It's probably just going to put in support at, like, 7, 730. And if not worse, if this news isn't going to get it uh, holding a stable bid, I don't know what it's going to take. I think you're definitely selling it in front of eight dollars if it gets there. But you know, if you're if you're long this, hopefully you got some profit out. That just it just feels overly weak with no excitement whatsoever uh, on the bid of this name, which kind of tells me that most people are have been looking at the you know the modernas of the world uh, and there's just. It just <laughs> So much focus in the market, I think, from the heavy trading has been piling into, you know, like CEI um, and, and, and some, of the, some of the crypto names that usually when I would expect to see volume out of Axart like, like today, it just feels like there's not any traders on this. And, and that's going to be the case. And you really have to wait for the key level. So unless this thing bounces off seven bucks or make some kind of a hero run to eight dollars, you really got to sit it out. Like I, I pulled my level two up. And there hasn't even been a print on this thing. When there's a print now, but like it's just not even printing. And it's like one share, two shares, 25 shares. So until Baxter gets going, you got to stay away from this bad boy. Seven dollars maybe, uh, eight dollars maybe okay. And Brendan mentioned that CCXI. We have to get to this one because it's on the move once again up to 36. This could go. Like I remember, I was saying you had that gap, that 47 to 50 area on the daily chart. It's now a double top here at 38, 37.90 to be precise. If it breaks this level, like it could really jailbreak, I think. And there's, there's $10 worth of a move. I know it seems crazy to, to say on a $38 stock you'd risk like 4 or $5. But on a 38 break, I think you're probably risking minimum back to this 35 level, if not this higher support that I put in at 33. And when it double tops like this, what you're looking for is a higher low. This is about where it was basing out. Uh, I call it like 33 even it's held about the same. So it's not really a higher low, but it's held the same floor at that 33 level after putting in the double top at 38. Uh, so if you take a 38 break, you really are not wrong until 33 comes in. But hey, that gap on the daily is 47 to 50. That's two to one if you're holding it all the way through. You can cover half at like a 44. But this is one I think I'm going to probably have if it breaks out at 38. So yesterday was uh, a big day for Ford. Um, so Ford, again, a stock that it's my recent, you know, it's really my recent acquisition here uh, on a real scale. Um, you know, we were waiting for this 1330 to break, and as soon as it did, we hammered this um, and went long at 1330. Uh, we didn't take any of these bottoms at 1250 or so. That would have been nice, but we hammered this uh, huge in my in my long-term account. So, you know, I, I'm not swinging this one. This is going to be a long-term play. I still think Ford takes out this 16, and I mean, it probably happens you know, next month probably. I mean, I don't know. It could happen next week, I guess. It could happen today. I don't think today. But um, that, that's a nice high there for Ford. And then yesterday, you know, we did have this big move up. We talked about that really just off GM. I mean, we're going to wait to see what Ford has to say. I mean, a lot of um, the, these companies now are going to electrify, you know, almost their whole fleet. I mean, the F-150 is already being worked on. The Lightning uh, is coming through. They have the Mach-E there for the uh, Mustang. And, I mean, just looking at this, I think we can get, 
And again, you know, I'm not going to make too many calls because uh, this is the NASDAQ, you know, up, down, back here, baselining, trying to come back in. So we'll wait. We've made the mistake before of taking out Ford early. And then, you know, we've had to go like go through some of the moves to the downside. I mean, even yesterday, here's Ford here. We, we, we traded it yesterday. And this is what I was talking about. Um, here's the big move off the open. Should have been long early, but it can do that. So then we shorted ahead of 15, right? We got hit there. Uh, we shorted 85s and 80s. We got out at 90s when that broke. Then we hit the short once we saw some um, resistance up here and uh, hit that and made that money back and, and, and got this back for a good name looking to take out 15 today we'll see if that does happen I'm a buyer down here though like I said we, we built back this 85 area so I think we could start to nibble here uh, if it works great then we'll have a nice winner when it comes back up to 15 but if it starts to fail around this area then I'm really concerned obviously about bringing it back to 1450 where we had some of this so I think it's worth averaging back down into 1450 in case the market drops down today I don't think Ford cares too much about the jobs numbers I mean their their sort of path is set for them um, so we'll wait to see where it goes but I like Ford back down here to 1450 I've already got some bids down here 1485 so we'll see if that happens but quickly before we go back to Brendan we haven't done a look at the imbalance locator the Chinese names continue to be the winners right now. I mean, Alibaba's right there, still taking out like 161 off of an 8% move yesterday. We'll see if that can hold out uh, some of the highs. Neo here as well, uh, starting to make moves up to $36. You know, nice move here as well. Palantir not doing anything, but it's on here. And I don't see anything else. So there's Ford right there as a small sell. So uh, we'll wait to see what happens here off the open. 15 minutes to go, guys. All right. Uh, conveniently, uh, Chinese stocks, the next group on the list here. Uh, a couple of news catalysts over the past couple of days. President Biden uh, and President Xi going to get together in a virtual uh, summit to discuss uh, trade. It would appear before the end of the year. Uh, Charlie Munger as well, Berkshire Hathaway's Charlie Munger coming out saying he's doubled his position in uh, Alibaba as well uh, on this pullback, saying this is way overdone, guys, as you said. Sean, big moves past couple of days. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's... Look, I mean, at this point, I really think it's somewhat of a lotto ticket to hit these uh, up, up this high up here for at 160. It's just what a great move this was yesterday, 150 all the way up to 160 uh, yesterday. And we were just, I mean, this just goes back, honestly, this kind of, it's not meme stockish, but this is like, you know, 144 up to 160 in two days seems to be a lot considering that we don't have much to go on. But we do know that Joe Biden's going to be speaking. Uh, I'm hoping with President Xi. I mean, that's been talked about there. Charlie Munger, okay, whatever. I mean, I can look up Berkshire Hathaway's stock um, and talk about that performance. And, you know, it's good. I mean, it's nice to hear that there's some, you know, some bigger buyers that are in here on some of these Chinese names. But Alibaba, definitely off the bottom. I mean, what a great pickup this name is going to be around the 140 area. But for now, I still think we got some room to go back to the downside and maybe backfill in here somewhere into the mid 150s. So, I'm excited for it. I'm long on Alibaba. I mean, it's the only Chinese name uh, that I'm long on right now. And uh, I'm long a lot higher than this. I'm long, I think it was 208, I was telling you guys, or 212, my average position. So it's, it's well out of the money right now. Um, and I'm not buying any more. But hey, if it comes back into these 150 areas and we have a strong market, then I think it's good to go. It's a little top heavy, in my opinion. That 9% move yesterday might be a little bit overdone. But hey, I mean, hopefully it's only, you know, what do they say, green shoots? Uh, moving forward here for uh, the China-U.S. relationship. I, I Look, I, I really, really would love Alibaba to break further out. I'm actually, I'm now almost flat on my, on my position in Alibaba. So it would be really, really nice if we break 161 and then, and then go, go from there. But you look at this, and again, this is back in the mid-September. I just think it's a bit of a rollover. I hinted at that when, when we were tweeting out this morning. And I gotta stick by it. Now it blew through. It blew through the area that I thought it could stall out at uh, in yesterday's action. So we got in and out very quickly on the short trade, and that turned into support. Oddly enough, I should have been paying closer attention to that because uh, we short off the top would have come previous what I thought resistance turned into that support. And I'm looking for a rollover in this tight range that it has here. Right, the market has managed to resist that 15,000. So it's not like we're breaking out overall just yet. I think, like John said, the fact that Charlie Munger is, is going to be doubling down this position probably bodes well for support if it drops down again. So that 130 um, on, on the daily that goes all the way back, we definitely like that. It stalled out in front of that level. And now I think you have some support around where Munger bought it. So if we're going to get a rollover on Alibaba today, I'm looking at about this. It's about a 161 area because it hasn't actually touched that. Probably closer uh, to 160 and a half is your target entry. 
uh, for me, maybe give it to like a 161 and change, something along those lines, or it could just be a simple breakdown. Uh, but I don't want to get into the trade until 930. Uh, I want the market to come in. Uh, hopefully, we'll still be in this tight range and we can look at that breakdown trade or just grab it in the middle here in Alibaba. I'm not necessarily believing uh, that it shouldn't pull back in, especially the fact that it, it got sold going into the close. It's going to gap up again, and the futures are running into resistance, and it's been so strong. Pullbacks are a healthy thing, and I feel like there could be one coming here. Uh, DATS, uh, another one moving around in the pre-market this morning. Uh, there's no real significant uh, news surrounding uh, DATS. It was uh, very active again yesterday, if you remember, coming back in today to that 850, 875 area where it initially broke out from. If you go back to last week and we saw that big move to the upside uh, for DATChat. Yeah, I mean, we do the same thing with these charts. It's like, when in doubt, zoom out. And it's not like it's not going to be that complicated, right? Because you look at that daily, as Brendan said, you had the breakout right around this $9 level, and now we'll pull it to the 15 minute chart. That's your breakout. This is your fall off a shelf at 11, and then you've been sitting in a range here from $7 to $9. Now, I will, the one thing I will say is the, the original dead, pan, uh, dead cat bounce that it got took it to $9.50. So I think on any kind of a break uh, through the high here, you have to consider uh, uh, getting some shares out, out in front of that 950 area uh, to be sure. Uh, and then 950 can be a break on its own as well. So, I mean, that's, it's going to stand out a little bit here. You have a 913, which is the actual high of the day. So if you take a break out through that level, uh, it's sort of pretty simple in that I would want to get some shares out in front of 950. I'd want to evaluate the volume whether or not you want to add to it if it were to try to break 950, if only because it's not doing a ton of volume right now and it's been tapering off. But those are the clear levels that are going to stand out. If it does fail and come back in, I can, you can kind of see where the support should be on the stock, down around that 7 to 750 area. Uh, but for now, you know, that's trying to get off the bottom here, trying to take out that previous breakout price. And when the same level is going to break twice, you can never really expect the same move. Like, it, this is not doubling going into 90. It's very... It's very I'd say very rare that you'd see that type of a thing happen here. Um, the $10 break was actually not even that good the first time. The second time was solid. But I just really think when you look at this chart, sure, this is a key level and a break. It'll be good there. You just have to temper your expectations as to how far you think DAX can go, given what happened the last time it broke this price. Likely to have a few more eyeballs on it and a few more sellers as it starts to go up. So I, I, I can answer uh, the question of how far I think it's going to go. We talked about it on, oops, that's, uh, oops, ah, uh, oh, shoot, it was right there. Um, right here on the sticky note, I, I talked about this as well. That's moving away, um, I'm sorry, moving again on no news. 950 long break should get us to 11. So I'm going to say if I take that 950 long, I'm going to wait out uh, for 11 and we'll try to stick to what we're talking about uh, there on the sticky note. I think there's a good opportunity for that name and glad, glad that we're covering it uh, today. AMC on the 20 minute interval, I think has a breaking spot as well, maybe at 3850 a year. The only problem is, is as I see this, I uh, mean, I wish there wasn't so much consolidation here between 40 and 39. Like this area here bugs me a little bit from October first it's just not super like i wish there was almost like a cleaner look at, at, at bottoms or whatever but 3550 there this is a great bottom for amc like if we ever get down to 3550 again i think i'll probably you know maybe buy some or maybe that's an option uh, option level there uh, to go back long once we hit there back into the 40s or so so we'll wait to see but again like i wish i almost wish that like 38 looked like this kind of a top where we had a little bit of room to go uh, up there but i think just a 3850 break right now I mean, where does that get us? I guess it gets us to 39. So, I mean, I like a 38.50 break. So I'm going to take that on AMC. It's just tempering my expectations here. Well, hopefully we'll be able to get some out at 39 if it goes. And then we'll look at 39.50. But I'd be really surprised if we take out 40. And if we do, man, then guns blazing on AMC to the upside past that. If we hit $40 today on AMC, guys, I mean, watch out. I think there's more people going back to the theaters right now. AMC has a good talk there. There's a few good movies um, out right now that, that, that we've talked about even here on the show. So let's wait to see what happens. I like AMC to the moon today. If we can take out this 3850, realistically, I think it moons if we go through 40. And by moon, I mean, if you start at 38 and you get to 42, I mean, I think that's a pretty good day. So we'll see what happens here today. But I like it. Breaking through this 3850, AMC, we're going to go on that. Uh, a few minutes ago here, guys, uh, a couple other little ones uh, on board to uh, talk about today. We mentioned uh, Sundial off the top of the show. A lot more people with us now. Neil, you want to run back over SNDL? Yeah, sure. Look, they, look they're making a purchase of, uh, 
I, I, I chuckle. Whatever. It's they're making a purchase with an Alberta liquor retailer that does have a cannabis subsidiary. So this is a play, um, I, I guess, to further their footprint. The volume has not picked up too, too much since we talked about it last time, but 74 was a previous key level. It's actually broken back below that price. It also happens to be the 50 period, uh, although for penny stock, sometimes I care about that, sometimes you don't. Uh, we're right back below that 74 with a, a couple of hundred thousand shares on the offer right now. So I, I thought the next level up was going to be about, eight, be about 85. It doesn't seem like we're going to test that. Usually I'm trying to short the pop at 930 uh, on Sundial, and that's the only reason I'm not even... Sh the only reason I'm not short right now in front of 74 is because the typical game plan on a day like this in Sundial would be to short a pop into the high of the day. So I don't want to break that rule, which had worked for me so well. Uh, and granted, this was like probably more than months ago, uh, the last time I was active on this one. Uh, but I'm not going to jump in front of that 74. I'll stick to the rules. If it pops into 70, uh, 76, 77 off that high, fair enough. If that breaks, I'll take a shot at that 85 level uh, as well. Uh, just a quick update on that CCXI. It did get to the top. Uh, again, it tested like 37 and change uh, and is now holding a higher low one more time. If that breaks out the high of the day, I do want to take it. It's got a monster gap to fill that CCXI all the way up to 47.50 if it does make a run. Just be careful. Uh, not the biggest float. Liquidity can be a concern. Halts a possibility on CCXI. Not Sundial. Yeah, I mean, you just talked about Sundial there. I mean, it's going to be a good name. I'm watching CEI right now bouncing around uh, here. It's 80 million shares in the pre-market. This is going to be one to watch out for. Big, probably huge, huge market on open orders are uh, going to be coming into this name as it's already up another 28% after 100% or so yesterday. Quick check on the imbalances before I throw it over to Brendan. Um, we have that MIC on there. That's hilarious. That's a buy. Um, NEO, NIO, uh, EIEIO on here as well. Um, Alibaba. So some of the Chinese names, all bids. Really no sells on here to be concerned with. I don't even know what this uh, warrant is. Uh, there is FAMI on here. We talked about that at that 40 cent range. Um, I know a lot of you are in this name. So to watch FAMI at 40 cents. We've talked about that uh, as well, but um, without any further ado, Naked Brands uh, on their DD. I, I don't see too much uh, you know, of interest there. These are low numbers considering it is a jobs report Friday, so uh, we'll wait to see where this goes. I'm liking Palantir back down near 23 if it gets there, but we'll talk about all these names for sure when the market opens, but right now Brennan has an exciting one at the big screen. Yeah, a couple of uh, small ones bottom end of the uh, list today, including this one, this Effector. A uh, recent addition uh, to the market, EFT are up 20% today. On positive news as well, there's really only one thing to be aware of, the top end of this range, uh, which is 15. So just watching 15 even on EFTR, uh, there was a bit of a pivot on the daily chart a couple of times for uh, that one, guys, Effector. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff to watch here. I'm going to add one to the list. It's been a big trade, obviously, and a big move in the last couple of days here, and that's going to be a firm. It did resist a double top here at 140, and uh, I talked about this, so I won't go over it. You guys probably watched the show yesterday, and I talked about not following my rules on a firm because you'll see a clean trade here a couple, a couple of days ago on Wednesday off that top at 140, and then you'll see me get rather impatient. I took a breakdown at that same level on firm at 132, uh, stopped out flat on that trade, and then started a short entirely too early and then bungled it at the top. So firm still has a 140 resistance. Now looking at the lower high it's putting in, that's about a 135, 136 was a key level. So 135, 136. I did say if it trended lower and was testing that 32 again in the afternoon show, I said if it's testing that, that again, it would still be a bit of a ro rollover trade because a firm has just come so far uh, that it has a bit of a pullback in it. The last couple times it's gone parabolic, there have been 10 to 15% pullbacks minimum. It has not done that just yet, so I still think that could be in the cards, and I'll go for it again today. Just try to be more disciplined. Like, if 136 goes, I'm out of the first trade. And if I'm out of that first short, there's no chance. I cannot take it until it tests 140, and I've got to be very patient with that entry. I got too excited because of how good it was uh, on Wednesday and started getting into that trade too early yesterday. We'll see what happens here today, uh, but I am going to be uh, uh, shorting a firm. I love a firm. I got it long term, but um, it's just it's, every time it's done this, there's been a good pullback, and it hasn't done it yet. It's still consolidating at that top. If it breaks this bottom, watch out. Yeah, uh, for sure. And, um, you know, if you guys want to follow, uh, I do have some reels and stuff like that gets posted uh, on Instagram. 
We just talked about this yesterday, man. These 3,500, you know, true followers. Um, you know, if you guys can follow Trader TV, Sean, we're posting out, you know, the jobs report here today. A few cool videos. And, uh, yeah, John Deere. Maybe you want to buy, uh, get some tractor game uh, going right there. Uh, but we'll put the link up one more time. And the reason we do this is that there's so many fake accounts hammering you guys every day. It's just Trader TV, Sean, Neil, and Brendan. Like, spelt the proper way. I'm the only one on Instagram, but all of us are on Twitter. So, please, um, you know, if you are getting messages, just make sure it is us. And, and don't have a problem, you know, trying to ask us even live on the show. Like, don't send. We don't ask for any money. We don't ask for anything. What's up, Bank Finanzas uh, there? What's up to you guys? What's up to Dan McIsaac as well? Um, I love the morning talks in the car. Okay, yeah, we could start to do that a little bit more. We did one today. If you go to my uh, videos, you'll see. I know it was around the studio here. I'll tell you, Miss V is off uh, for a couple of days enjoying yep. her um, Thanksgiving there in the lovely province of British Columbia. So I want to give a big shout out to Laura, um, who is remote. Uh, and doing this from Massachusetts. So uh, shout out to uh, Laura as well, uh, I believe. Anyways, that, that, that's where she's at right now. Yep. Uh, so, okay, let's get ready to rock and roll with only 20 seconds to go. Thank you, Laura, uh, for keeping the chat uh, somewhat sane. And uh, guys, let's uh, get ready to rock and roll. CEI through 230, we're going to look at that as well. And it is Maggie on the bells. You guys can already see there. There she is. Give a nice little oh. wave. Uh, filling in for uh, Miss V. Five, four, let's end Casual the week Friday, right. baby. <laughs> Two and one, ring it. <laughs> There we go, Maggie. Crushing it there. Thank you, Maggie. The best bell. Oh, hold on a second. Uh, yeah, we're waiting to see what's going to happen here. Um, I was going to compare her to Randy, but uh, I can still hear. So that's always nice when that happens. Um, okay, thank you, Maggie, for sure, for that one. Um, we're just going to keep on going here. Uh, keep on trying to make some money for you. Watch out for CEI. Starting to make some moves here again. We're waiting for that 220 to break. Here it comes the downside. We will be small short if it does break 220. So watch out now. Tons of volume. 89 million shares. Let's see where we go from here, guys. Yeah, and oh, there's the break. Temporarily. Yeah, it already broke. I'm actually sitting on the bid in front of that uh, $2 level, uh, well in front of it. But Tesla, make us oh, still affirm it. Tesla making a bit of a move here to the downside. I wanted that fade off of 200, but I'm oh, sorry, 800, but it looks like it's already heading back in. If it comes and pumps back up and gives you like 96, 97, I will be waiting around to fade uh, Tesla off those levels, but they're already selling this one off rather heavily. All right, so see, I, a very, very small show. We're going to hold on to that one. Yeah, you can see the futures coming back down. Let's see if we can pick up some Palantir. We talked about that. We're holding a very, very small. That Q's position of mine is like less than 5% of what we had. We're, I'm holding it so I could watch this thing go, and that's basically the point. That's how we're watching Palantir here. Palantir is going right to the upside on this market move to the downside. So that's always a positive thing. we got to get long on Palantir at some point now that it looks like it's trying to break through $24. So this is a long punch, man. we got to get long Palantir right now, guys. Um, and then that's what I'm going to be looking at. And we're going to watch that CEI as it's handing back to the upside. And uh, so a bit of a down candle here on that CCXI. I know it's $2, but yeah, a bit of a down candle because the stock is going to be very, very volatile. Uh, 33 is your support. I do have a stop to break out if it takes out 38. But if it consolidates on a higher low, I still think there's a bit of a gap to fill. You have an obvious support level at that 33. You might have to give this like an extra 50 even cents, maybe even a little bit more than that off of every single key level. But I did say if I had an opportunity to buy a bit of a dip in front of that 33, I would try to do it. So as it reclaims 35 here, I'm going to see if I can't get in without having to chase it too far and see if I can't ride this wave into the upside. As long as 33 is held, held I do want to be testing the long side of this trade and that has everything to do with that daily chart and the monster gap that this had um, between current high and that 47.50 so all we got on right now is CCXI uh, Tesla's trying to get back to 95 I am looking to fade that on a pop Okay, so um, right now, again, it's, this is a very, very small trade. This is where we're trying to get short. I do have an offer up here. This is what we're talking about. We were talking about waiting to get this thing to 250. So it t tests that 220 CEI. Now let's wait to see where we go. I feel like this, this short is going to get, this short is already roasted, but that's not going to be a problem. We're going to put on some shares right now at 44 and then wait for this 250 to break. Bad. Because, yeah, if that happens now, uh, then we got to get out. So right now we're short on CEI uh, two. What's my average price? 237, 238. So there you go. That's how you know we put on some decent shares up here so let's see where the downside comes here for cei yeah i mean a couple of businesses just came in there for me uh, i when you said see i was going downside uh, yeah. i actually didn't think i had any chance to get filled at the, at the high of the day in front of the 50 level and next thing you know i'm just filled like you you were saying it and then it's like holy crap i just got filled on that order so i just got a 44 short dats broke the high so i got a long there uh, on a breakout but i got to get some of this cei out because uh, I was anticipating, like you were saying, that it was going into the downside. I thought I was going to get triggered into some kind of a long position, and then it went the other way. So I just covered half of my CEI 44 at 30, so we can be happy about that. We'll spike a little Hell bit there. Yeah. But DATS is going the 
Well, I mean, I guess they're both going the other way because long DT, uh, that's, that's broke that high and comes right back into nine even. So just immediate failure. So I will not like this one. We'll do this for that. It's holding up at this nine. And if it reclaims nine even and then can hold a bit of a bid there, then I'll probably add to this position. There's definitely room to run if it gets going on DATS. So we've reclaimed nine. Uh, I think can take a few more shares here. There we go. We just got some more shares on DATS. Let's see if it can't break out. There's still that 9.50 that we talked about, so I want to be covering some shares in front of it and then looking for a breakout at that price, as long as there's volume. I want there to be volume at 9.50 if, if that's is going to get there. Okay, so uh, yeah, right now we're rocking and rolling here. We're trying to figure stuff out. Uh, Q's trying to run. We did average into our Ford rate. We're not averaging. We have this Ford trade. This is what we were looking for here. Was a dip buy into 85. I mean, we talked about that. Uh, it happened. So we'll walk on a little bit of water here um, with Ford as, yeah, that's coming out uh, right now. We'll put a little offer on Ford and see if we can get a few shares out here at 92-ish. But that was a good one, man. We picked that up right off yesterday's bottoms. Uh, good, hopefully a good move there uh, on I'm Ford. And uh, we'll see where it goes. Oh my God, that's so nice of you. Thank you, Maggie. Wow. You're the best. Wow, that's the best. All right, thank you. Wow, very nice of you. Thank you so much for that one. Um, and here we go to the downside again on CEI. So, I mean, this is going to be a big win for me, man. We'll go bearish on the name. But again, if you just follow the sticky note, then we talked about shorting it into 250. And I mean, and I haven't told you where my offer was. So, yeah, big time trade here for me on CEI as it's now coming back to the downside. Obviously, oh this goodness. gave me the average price of 38, but it doesn't matter when the, when the thing's at 26. So, let's go CEI. Nice move to the downside as we're getting excited got to put the coffee down and make a trade here yeah i mean the firm's gonna do that thing that it does where i get so close to my fill in front of that 135 and then you're gonna see it flush so did miss out on the initial move to the downside here but i do still like it for the fade we're around that 132 key level that was a break from yesterday so now that it's taken that 132 at least is attempting to i can think about trading it a little bit lower still have that 35 36 area for a bit of a stop but i can enter into this position a little bit i just got sundial for those of you that are like is neil gonna trade Sundial. Yeah, I took it in front of that in front of that 74 level. It does look like the volume is still trying to kick in there, and it couldn't seem to break too much lower. So I'm now short Sundial in front of that uh, 74 cent level. A firm looking to pick some shares up here if we can get them. I'm still in CEI and DATS and CCXI. Uh, it's whippy, man. Like this is this is kind of weird, but it's got this like two dollar range it's putting in here. And if it's going to do this, I should be taking some out at the top end of this range. I didn't do it when it got there the first time. Uh, I am going to do it this time. Like, if I have to start scalping this trade because that's all it wants to do, then that's what I'm going to go ahead and do on CCXI. I do want to be net long as long as it holds 33, though. That's the goal here. Be net long as long as CCXI is above 33, but I'm going to have to start taking profit if it wants to put in a range. Uh, yeah, we're just getting out a little bit here. We're trying to get out of some Ford anyways, as we didn't get any of those 92s. So there you go. We'll take a 91 there, um, and we'll see if we get back to the upside. We'll wait for some 92s again. CEI still moving to the downside. What up, Bren? A uh, big mover from yesterday, guys. This MRUS just popping back up again right at uh, this resistance point from uh, midday yesterday, 28, 28 and a half. Uh, decent volume again on this MRUS. So right. we'll do this for DAX. Uh, so I mean, could have got more aggressive, picking some more shares up on the dip. Now remember, guys, 950, 950, 950. This is 950. Um, I want to be out of at least half his position if it gets to 950. And if there's enough volume, it'd be a place to add. And then from there, uh, as we mentioned, this is the gap fill that it does have. Do I think that it's going to be? Look, this is like, like we said before. Um, first resistance is probably going to. This is not going to 19 dollars again. Like you can probably. Uh, stick that stick a fork in it <laughs> fork in me because uh, I'll probably be shorting this one if it gets to that 11 to 12 mark but we are long for now it is working CEI just because just because I'm in the short position or, or we it doesn't it's not going to change the fact that I like the chance to test the long in front of two right so I am short now and start covering some more shares at this quarter mark and then down at 220 but I still want to go long in front of that two level you can play this in both directions uh, that's part of what you do as a day trader and Tesla now, give me a break, I can cancel my Tesla offer. Uh, Tesla's now gotten away from us. Uh, yeah, 787 on Tesla. Yeah, too far down. We talked about that 805 uh, bid there. Thank you so much, Cortez Owens, man. Let's get this. This should be a Super Chat Friday, maybe, guys. Thank you so much. CCXI, we'll talk about that. Yeah, we know that they're white labeling that drug. We talked about that in the pre-market. It's actually on our watch list. So let's look at CCXI uh, quickly. Thank you so much for the Super Chat. Uh, it's an easy way for us to call up your uh, your trades, that's for sure. Um, a 20-minute chart.
chart up to the upside. You take out that 38 and watch out, man. CCXI right now a big mover today. We've talked about that. I don't know, Brendan, if you want to go over the news story one more time uh, with CCXI off that super chat just to give everyone um, a, a rough understanding of what that is as uh, I'm not super familiar with it other than what we have on our notes. So uh, let's go over to Brennan and thank you so much for the super chat. Yeah, I was just going to bring that back up. Uh, in the meantime, I'll tell you about this one, guys, as well. Rocket Lab, RKLB, down 7.5% today. Uh, big mover the past couple of days right at this 14, guys, trying to hold on volume for RKLB. We saw Ooh, that yesterday, Rocket man. We, yeah, uh, that, that was yesterday. We, we, we hit some home yesterday. runs on Rocket Lab yesterday. Uh, but we're hitting a home run right now. We'll do some chicken dinner winners on CEI because, I mean, that one, what a big trade that's been for me today. It's been my biggest one, obviously. We will talk about averaging into Palantir right now. Um, as Palantir just falling like, like a rock right now. Um, we were able to get something out, but you can see my average price right now is 85. So we're out of the money right now, 20 cents. And if we look at, uh, where is the 20 minute? Oh, my God. Uh, anyways, the 20 minute, I'll find it for you. Here it is. Um, I only have three charts open, but I don't have much screen space here. Um, you know, 23, th this area for me right now, you obviously got that big bump up the last couple of days. We got super excited and then bought some in the pre-market. I think it was 24.50 or 60, something like that. So we're down a dollar on our long-term account. It's fine. Uh, not worried about that. But right here, 23.50 uh, has held. That's 23.40. So... I'm going to be stop I'm stopped averaging in now. We've had some, I mean, look at CI tanking it's right now. Um, good, great trade on CI to the downside. We talked about that off that 250 level. So hopefully you guys are able to catch that. But Palantir, no more averaging in until we get down to here. I mean, if it's going to break, it's going to break 23. And that's where I'm going to sort of put my line in the sand on Palantir. So wow, CEI again. Like if the sticky note doesn't remain supreme today, then um, I, I just hope you guys continue to fall. I said short off 250 and it's at 216 off of 250. What's that be? Yeah, crazy action, guys, on the uh overall market uh, so far here we go chemocentrics uh fda approval for a vasculitis drug if anyone knows what that they get uh, what that is they get bonus points guys yeah uh <laughs> if you know yeah you definitely get bonus points wow and again look, it's gonna be the same thing over and over again with sundial but like i said it's gonna do sundial things it's already falling off that 74 level again it's probably gonna break 70 even at some point 70 pennies uh so we'll see what happens i mean i'm already in, i'm in the short i'll add to it on every single pop that we can get I apologize for not getting to Moderna, but Moderna is doing that thing where it does. It's falling again. Moderna's got support. Uh, I should say this because it hasn't had a lot of support, but Moderna actually should have support at around 305 if it gets to that price. So watch out. Moderna could catch a bit of a bit at 305. It's been mostly a short for me, and by mostly I mean almost every single day I've been short that stock. So Moderna heading down. Um, CEI is about five or six cents away from me trying to think about a reversal into a long trade. It's going to get there. I feel like it's almost a certainty. Uh, I just got some more shares off at 15. I'm going to continue to cover this thing in front of that $2 range uh, because I did anticipate that there could be a long coming in CEI in front of that $2, but well in front of two. Like I want to start this at probably like 210, 211, something along those lines. Uh, so I got to be flat first. I mean, you can't be long if you're short in a stock. That should go without saying. Yeah, we talked about this level um, on Ford, uh, 85s, guys. I mean, you want to have a banger right now in the building. Let's go. I mean, I, I can't do anything better than this. Pick the bottoms, and then right now we're still in this name. So picked it out. You know, it was battling itself around a little bit. But there goes Ford Man straight to the upside. So hallelujah on that one as it's starting to rock and roll. The opposite of what Palantir's doing, of course. But for right now, Ford to the upside, we're going to watch that. We've already talked about our Palantir trade as it's moving lower here um, on the futures going to the upside. We initially... So this is the thing. When the futures fell here, and again, it's just going to be a bad read. When the futures fell here and Palantir started going up, that's why we bought here. Like there was really no, you know, these are sort of like lotto tickets there. Now we're starting to really get into some levels that we like on Ford. So this is some levels of concern for me. So we're going to wait to see what happens, sorry, on Palantir here. Um, coming to the downside, we're going to put it on a, big, a bigger trade soon, an average in, but I think i got to let this fall just a little bit more, even to 23.50 before we do anything. But uh, right now, just loving Ford, up 20 cents, um, just touched 15.12 there. Uh, we may take out one more piece, but so far so good here uh, on Ford. A nice runner to the upside. And uh, a firm is going to do that thing it does where it stops me out the first trade. We said we'd take two cracks at this. Yesterday, I took like three, uh, three shots on the short side of the trade. We'll do the one here. Going to get out. I'm not touching this unless it's back. Look, it has to break this bottom at like 131, 132, or it's going to be up at 140. And yesterday, I already started a position way too early and did not wait for that 140 level. This time, I'm waiting for 140. This, this CCXI is strange because I, I can't imagine a scenario in which it's, it's kind of happening right now. So I can't imagine a scenario in which where it sits in this range and does not 
uh, look, it doesn't break 10% from here. And whether that's 10% breaking out at 38, uh, which I actually want to be adding to the position if it breaks at 38, or, I mean, thinking about a jailbreak short if it breaks 33. One way or the other, this thing has got to go. Um, it's still coiling up here, but watch out, it's lower highs. I'm long as long as it's in front of that 33 level. I think that's a big level. Clearly, you can see that holding in the pre-market, and it's got a monster gap to the upside. That's why it's worth a shot on the breakout, even if you're risking 3 or $4. Brendo? Uh, just checking on Reshape Life Sciences. Not seeing any big headlines on this, but big move uh, nevertheless. 260 up to 290 here, trying to get back above some key levels for RSLS. Huge volume on this one, too. Okay, so uh, with that being said on um, CEI, we've absolutely destroyed this stock today. Um, it, it's been just such a good one uh, for me. A great position there. I talked about putting on some big boy shares up at the top there. and That's exactly what we did, and it's perfect uh, on the sticky note there. So uh, we talked about the short into 250, and bang, that's what happened. We did also talk about this trade, which was bad, short at 220, but again, We've talked about this, and thank you to you guys, your viewers, wanting to know, like, you know, when we're putting on shares, when we're not, what is our position sizing, things like that. And I told you this was a very, very small position, 25% of what we wanted, so that when it came up here, we put on a bigger spot, giving us our average price of 38, right? So we talked about that. That's what you guys want. So, hey, man, welcome to the jungle. We're here to serve, and uh, hopefully you guys you know, able to take some advantages of those plays uh, with us as well. Uh, Ford having a little bit of a stop and go party up here at 1507. So we'll wait to see what happens now. But I'm going to get out of one more piece here and then hold one uh, to see if we can go all the way to the top side now. So we'll hold that 25%, 25, 50, 75. Actually, these are both 20%, 20, 40, 60. We'll get out of one more spot and then see how high it goes. But if we can get to 510, 512, we're going to take a spot out here um, on uh, Ford, which here it goes. We're going to get out one more pop here right now. And uh, Alibaba, by the way, he does really? do that break. Yeah, Alibaba breaks down. So you, if I usually am in four or five positions oh, at the down. beginning of the... Yeah, broke down. Oh, okay. I'm in four or five okay. positions at the open, which ended up happening here today. I'm not likely to take another one. That's the only excuse I'll have. So, you know, if I traded both, obviously Baba and uh, a firm, Baba would have worked and a firm did not. Um, but now that you're to the downside on Baba and we anticipate this pullback, I'd just rather play the trend here so you can always take a step back, say, okay, fine. Look, I missed a trade, that 930 pop, which gave you the perfect setup, failed at the high, and then comes right back in, breaking 160. You could have taken the break, the low trade. Both those have now worked. Now I want to sit here thinking about how do I play this trend. You got a 158 bottom. So you get top to bottom about a $3 range. I think it goes halfway, which it's doing here. You can retest some of these uh, pre-market lows into 160 and then play the fade off of that area. So that's what I'm going to do here in Alibaba. You can't, you can't get mad at the fact that you missed out on an A-plus setup. You just got to move on to the next trade. And we're moving on to the next news story because Brendan's got it. AEHR, which is another semiconductor uh, test company so they they manufacture equipment that tests semiconductors this is all-time highs up here today up 10 percent a couple of upgrades on that one guys yeah and now i remember it was like ahr i knew i, knew I remembered what what stock that was this was a good man this was a good runner and I, this the dip was almost too big uh, i think on 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 aehr and i think that's probably why i wrote it off when it got to that 12 down to 12 dollars ridiculous run obviously um, this is on a, this is a huge breakout. I don't like the notion of uh, necessarily shorting this stock because there's no levels to work off of. So I'd be thinking about things like halts, um, you know, 10% move, things along those lines. Uh, but on a pullback, on a dip, 1750, a consolidation break, if it wants to come back and test 1750 and then continue the move, I think that can make sense. Uh, by the way, now you're looking at 302 on Moderna. So Moderna continues to fall. 300, I guess, is the next level. I mean, at some point, I want to see if I can't bottom pick that stock because um, it feels like the trend was reversing a little bit on, on that one. But I can't touch AEHR, at least in terms of a short trade. But a long 1750 on a bounce, that makes a little bit of sense to me. Okay, so we are um, taking a little bit more now uh, on Palantir because if you look at the 20-minute chart, uh, we're into some levels now where, you know, we're, we're not going to make too, too many more stabs at this thing because, you know, you make the big winner on Ford, the big winner on CEI, and then you give it back on one trade. And that's going to happen. Like I said, I've, this is now the 8th of October, um, and I'll have to go back to find a negative day uh, on, you know, in, in the account for me. But, you know, today, I'm not going to let that happen today either. So we're going to wait to see here what happens at this bottom. We're still waiting for 23. 
I, I'd hate to get out if 23 breaks, but like, I don't know how far Palantir can fall today. We're already down that 1.16%, let alone the market, giving back absolutely everything that it made today. So, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely a bear right now in this market. We talked about that. Someone asked me yesterday, have we seen the bottoms in the market? And I said, we'll probably get another one of those opportunities to swoosh back down. And, you know, you don't want to be long a name that's pretty weak uh, if that does happen. So we'll wait. We'll wait for it. But for right now, I'm not super, super excited. But one thing I am excited about, CEI continues to make the move to the downside. And then, guys, look at Ford, man. Spin it right now. Money, 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 money. I mean, money, you know, money, we'll spin money, it for money. Ford because this is a big trade right up to the upside here. But we are going to protect our accounts with that Palantir. And then RKLB, did that, did that still continue to go down? I just saw someone uh, talked about that. Rocket Lab yesterday uh, was a big trade for me, about 60 or 70 cents. Yeah, nice move back to the upside. So was wondering what was up with that stock. I mean, I know Brendan talked about it earlier. But yeah, it didn't seem to think that that was going to be uh, as low as it was. Yesterday, we got it in the pre-market right here uh, at right here at 15 bucks. Got it out at 15.50, then again at 15.60 at the end of the day. So nice trade on Rocket Lab yesterday. But looks like that move downside today just got bought up like crazy. So a nice move back to the upside. Congratulations, anybody that had that one. So I'm going to get my first fill long side here on CEI. It started at 11, like I said, it probably a little bit early. I mean, I said I wanted in front of, well in front of that too, more like the sixes or sevens oh, and the wow. average price. I don't know. Uh, Moderna, I'm now, I just tried to get 302. Oh my goodness, I'm Moderna. So it, Moderna just bounced off of 301.50. Like it was just scream, it was screaming into 300. Uh, and I was taking a shot there that when it made that last wick down at 301.50, I tried to cross up and grab 302 to long side and now sitting there. Uh, you know, holding the you-know-what as it bounces back up to that 305. So it might have just barely, barely uh, missed out on that trade. I did just get into uh, Alibaba finally. So starting it at 159, that's starting to pop back into the upside. Uh, but Moderna definitely making a little bit of a bottom here at 300. If it retests, it might be worth a shot. Here comes that CEI. Two dollars. I want to get a look at the level. Oh, see, it's on the it's on the Amex. It's on the Amex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I always do that when I'm typing it in. You're just not used to it. So we bounced one time off of 205. I haven't had anything yet. I wanted to look at that level uh, as we get down towards I mean, that two dollars. I didn't just, see anything. We just got a 204. I didn't bit, see it. Yeah. I didn't see anything at two at two two dollars. I, I don't know. We just cashed out for 40 cents on that one. So yeah, it's hot dog time for CEI again, man. And I mean, this is wow uh, is all I could say. I mean, to have that crystal ball and just dump everything into this name that would have been nice but of course we don't have that so um, we'll wait to see what happens now but wow a big dump to the downside there what a cash out right there that's 40 cents you can see now we have the 44s on the average price for me was 38 so it's still, you know if you held it this whole way you know welcome to 30 cents there it's a big win on CEI I mean so we'll take that but uh, for right now man Palantir doesn't seem like it has anything uh, in the way that's still the cues oh we don't need the cues sorry let's go to Palantir uh, Palantir just looks like it keeps on falling so you know again one last line in the sand somewhere near 23 but we're gonna have to get there first and then i don't know we'll, we'll, we'll hold it i mean you guys if you guys are day trading i still think you could probably hold this name but at the same time i mean it's been a nice little move to the downside they even got more contracts today so it seems like every time palantir gets a contract it goes down so uh, we'll, we'll, use, I think. yeah yeah exactly so we'll have to wait to see what happens with that one but uh so far not so good on that name so uh, AMD back down to 106 as well. That could be a good buying opportunity. Facebook holding up strong today. Yeah, I mean, like, and, and again, just like Moderna, like I tried to get 06s there on the way up instead of on the way down. Like the fill I get at 10, sorry, at 11 here is on the way down in CEI. And then I'm sitting there looking for where it bounces and just trying to tick up. Uh, I miss it here at, at 206. If it comes back down, I'll probably look for closer to the low. The low right now is 203, so call it like a 205, where I'll probably be sitting on the bid for some more shares as well. I wanted to play this in both directions, like we said all morning long, so that's what I want to go ahead and do. Uh, back over to Alibaba. Uh, like I said, I got some of that at 159.15. Load. There we go. At 159.15, it spiked. It actually just rejected 160, so this, when I add to it, I want it to be on the way down. And like I said, missed that first trade. And then I'm just going to want to play off of the, the, I guess, the, it's all about the direction. It's all about the trend. And if it's going to be a downtrend, I'll play the trend. You don't get the first breakdown. But I can start thinking about building a position off of the higher lows, taking some out of 158, trying to rinse and repeat that. Exactly. If Sundial does something, I'll let you guys know. It's just sort of sitting in the money here, not really capitulating, uh, but also not doing a heck of a lot. CCXI, on the other hand, it's finally starting to it think it wants to make a move here. Uh, you're seeing it now test, and it just bounced off of 33, which is that support level. So I did add to it when it held that 33 support. It's put up or shut up time. I'll probably scalp some of it, like I said, in front of that 38, because 
as long as 33 holds, then it's still a breakout trade at 38 when it does, if, if and when it does happen. You know, shouldn't say when because anything can happen. I'm not going to sit here predicting it's going to break 38. But if it does break 38, I am, am going to try that long. And for those of you that have tuned in, uh, just tuned in, CCXI, monster gap all the way back into May to the downside. And this is about, you know, it's like 45 to 50. So I was saying all morning long, halfway through there, like 47 into 50. I think that's your target area. If this, one, if this one breaks out to the top, decent chance that it could fill the entire gap in, although I would suspect it might halt on the way uh, before doing it, based on the liquidity I see here. If it breaks 38, that is. Yeah, 38 is going to be a great one for that one. Um, yeah, I don't know. Are you still in your DATS? I mean, people talking about DATS right I'm now. stopped on DATS. Oh, eight, I got like eight, I got some out. Yeah, because I and then I just got stopped like a couple of minutes ago. So I took the break. Nine. Okay, so that's what yeah. people are talking about. It broke back down below nine bucks. So yeah, that's touched that nine fifty for me. It was a no go until nine fifty, but it got close there. Nine break. Yeah, that was good too. Uh, down to eight seventy. We'll watch that uh, right now. What's up, Brandon? Uh, some energy companies starting to uh, pop back to the upside here. Uh, APA is the first one. APA Corporation. Uh, this is fifty two week highs here. Uh, for this one, up 5% so far on decent volume as well. Yeah, I mean, I still am holding Palantir, guys. I see you guys talking about it. I mean, it's not a heavy position because I've, you know, I've decided not really to average into this name uh, here, but we've taken two shots right here, and they're not good. That's why you can see 73s uh, are my average price right now. So I'm out of the money, 30 cents uh, now on Palantir. And unfortunately, I don't really see any uh, areas to average into, uh, to be honest with you. And averaging in is not a recipe for success. Uh, those of you that have done that know that, that that can absolutely burn you and kill your whole account, right? So I'm just, I'm at this point, I'm just going to wait to see what happens at $23. I will probably put in one more bid somewhere a little bit lower for like another 20 25% maybe of this position, uh, but we're not we're not willing to die on any kind of swords here. We're still positive today, obviously. We have a 50 cent winner on Ford right now, which is just absolutely rocking and rolling. I mean, we'll fire off the hot dogs for Ford as this just keeps on going to the upside. Like, I actually wish I had this in my swing trade account because then I'd be more likely uh, to get out of it now. But because I'm long term here, I'm holding out uh, for Ford uh, to go even further than this. But a nice move up on Ford. And then I don't need to tell you guys the kind of damage that we did on CEI. So, we, I, I mean, I got out. Now I'm holding 10% left for 5% left, less than that, actually. Uh, we take a big bid there at 203 uh, and get out 204, actually. We have the bottom of the day there and the top. Like, we have a bottom Wiccans and a top Wiccans right here on CEI. What's up, Brendo? Uh, you mentioned Ford ties to this one, uh, guys. GM, wow. Uh, nice move for this as well. 56 and a half straight through to some of these levels over here. 58 and a half coming into play. Yes, sir. And uh, it's going both ways here on, on CEI. It's getting to that uh, 220 area. Now, look, on the way down, this was the only real consolidation that it had that I gave you any kind of a bounce. It was about 213 to 220. Uh, so I'll cover some of what I was able to get. I wasn't able to get what I wanted at the bottom there, as you guys know, a couple of seconds ago, or a couple of minutes ago. Uh, but I am still going to cover some in this range of 220. I only got the 11s. I want to be adding to this in front of that $2 range if I can. I tried to get it on the way up instead of the way down. It was probably a bit of a mistake. Given the liquidity that it had, it's probably okay to be sitting on the bid just in case. Uh, so we'll see what happens, CI. There's no way I'm not covering this in front of the high of the day. I would almost anticipate it puts in a lower high. Uh, Sundial has given me absolutely no chance uh, whatsoever to get into any more shares here like I wanted to. It's just continuing to fall. It's broken that 70 level. Uh, it's now trading at 69. So if it makes a fresh low, I'll start taking some more shares off here. But, you know, Sundial, if it gives the entire... If Sundial were to give up the entire gain, I actually wouldn't be surprised. So it could be at 65 cents by the end of the day. It would be no shock to me based on the way it usually trades. Yeah, Sundial is a funny stock there. Uh, so many shares outstanding on Sundial. Yeah. So um, watch, yeah, watch out for that. Um, okay, so Palantir does come back a little bit there. We didn't get anything out. It went up to 50 there. So uh, we're going to have to hold out and see where we go on that one. But Palantir right now, um, that same, whoopsies, uh, the same story uh, remains true for that one. We needed to go. So uh, that's what's happening. Let's check out on AMD. We talked about that earlier. Um, this can't just... I was going to say, this can't just keep on falling, can it? Uh, but we will see right here on AMD and where we go from here. But, um, okay, so 106, 105, uh, there was a good level. I mean, let's see what that looked like on a 20-minute. I don't know if this is the right stock to trade today. I mean, I'm going to look at Tesla maybe is moving around. I mean, that was a good spot right there that we down to 105.80 uh, right now. Just a matter of, like, 
I'm a little bit gun shy because of the, some of the names that we're in right now. Like, do I really want to go long as here comes Palantir right back? Uh, we talked about trying to hold out for that one. Let's just take a quick look on Tesla here before we go. Um, seven, we're not going anywhere. Uh, 784, 785 right now. So Tesla does make a move downside here uh, off that morning. I mean, what a big move down. And those of you, I mean, you can rewind the show yesterday to about 340. I know Jude uh, can verify this. I mean, anybody can. When I said, you know, sell Tesla yesterday, I talked about it. Um, you know, sell the rumor, buy the news, whatever. Um, so it would be the opposite. That would be what it was. Normally, it's the other way around. But I was saying sell. When they talked about this possible dividend coming, that was going to be a nothing. Um, so that was all the way back down. And then now today, it's just kind of following the market as the market's trying to turn sick a little bit here, uh, just hovering around zero uh, on the NASDAQ. And the same thing for the ES, uh, as I'm looking at that right now. NEO is still at 36.50, uh, 36.25, sorry, as well. Hitting that high of 3650, uh, a firm. I know you're in that. That's 140 right now. That's a monster trade as well. Um, and then Alibaba. You know what? Maybe we got to get into Alibaba. Let's have a look at that. Um, 166, or sorry, 160, 60. Uh, there, the nice high. We'll see if it takes that out, man. 160, 80 for Alibaba. What's up, Brendo? Uh, Ren, R E N N. A huge mover here. Looks like it's already been halted once. Guy's gonna double check on this, but monster volume spike just came in there. Uh, Ren, off to the races. Oh my goodness, we need to add another mover like that. So, uh, look, obviously a firm came to 130, 140. Uh, I, I got 139s. And um, we said we wait until it got to that level, and I'll show you why. Uh, this is a failure at the top here. I should have a bunch of trades here showing, showing the same action in yesterday's action. Uh, but here comes 140. This time, I, I waited for it to test 140 and then got in. Uh, I got to 139.54. I got it on the way down at 139. We'll see what happens. But I mean, obviously, 135 to 136 is going to be an area where you got to take some profit out, or at least I will, uh, based on my nature and how I like to trade it. Uh, coming back into, I mean, you just mentioned Alibaba. Is, is it test the high here? Remember that trade that I liked in the morning? It's giving you another chance here around that 160, 160 and a half. 161 is a key level. My break evens at 162, oddly enough, but I don't want to root for it uh, in the long term because you got to make sure you divorce yourself. Uh, when you're day trading from those long-term positions. Uh, just so you guys are watching, I know it's not the Camber show, but it's, it's moving. It turned off VWAP here, so it's a good thing we got some out of 220. I am looking to reload this. Uh, I will go long again if it gets to that $2 range. It's part of the game plan, and as long as it wants to hold two, then I want to buy in front of it. If two breaks, obviously I'm going to be getting out if $2 breaks, uh, regardless of the size of the level, how many are on the bid or not. It's just... It's a round number. It's respected the dollar at least the first couple of times. I kind of think it'll do the same thing at two. Yeah, so right now we're just watching here. Um, you know, Ford had that nice high there and then fell back down a little bit there. So uh, we'll watch it. We're still, we're, we're lighting it, but we still do have it um, as we're looking for some other names to trade here. I mean, AMC, I'm just trying to find some names that, that might, you know, have some kind of a movement to it uh, here because right now there's not much happening uh, on a lot of these spots. So uh, AMC right now, and again, it's kind of the same thing on AMC, not much happening again. Uh, just bouncing around here, trying to hover around, figure out what it wants to do. I mean, if you take out that level, maybe we can have something 37.85 uh, there on AMC. Last time we tried it, it got to 88. So, you know, there is a possibility here for AMC a little bit, I guess, uh, to the upside if we can break this level, which actually I like this level now that I look at this. One more chance at 37.85, and we'll look at uh, AMC there. So I, I, I kind of like that move, and we'll see if it can come through. So that's going to be AMC through that level. I like it, but uh, we'll, we'll put a mark on it. It's coming out right now. You'll probably get long. So I'm going to be long AMC soon, but for right now, we got to throw back to Brett and for happening now, guys. Hey, guys, yeah, 10 o'clock. Let's have a look at North American markets here. Started off pretty exciting with the jobs number, but much to do about nothing, really. We're kind of flat overall. S&P positive, which is good, obviously. The Dow trying to make its way back uh, to the upside as well. Uh, the NASDAQ, just as we're standing here, trying to go positive as well. So a uh, little bit of movement in the right direction here in Toronto, up 0.4% for the TSX. couple of things we mentioned pre-market, if you joined us, yeah, Tesla, uh, the guys were talking about this as well, sliding back into some uh, prior support, 780 uh, coming into play here. It did bounce off 782 there, that last test of the downside. Uh, volume uh, higher than normal as well today on Tesla. Same story with Vaxart. We mentioned the uh, oral COVID-19 vaccine data out after market here yesterday. The slide continues back to the downside for VXRT, guys. Back to you. Yeah, and speaking of slide, there goes that CCXI, breaks that support level. So, I mean, look, I still, 
I might still take a break depending on what happens uh, to this on the other direction here. You're gonna see the reversal. I mean, it's it's a pretty large level uh, that 33 even. So you're gonna see me. I mean, it should be showing up there. Yeah. Well, actually, no. I don't know if it is showing up. Hopefully, you guys see it there. Uh, I'm gonna play this a little bit of a reversal off that 33 level. Gave it up on the long. If it doesn't, if it doesn't really break down from here, then I think you can still be on board with the 38. But if this if this flushes into 30, which I kind of feel like it's going to, otherwise I wouldn't have you know, taken any shares to the, uh, to the short side. If it does do that, then I'm going to go no more stop for a breakout at 38 because it will have to travel too far to get there and then sort of reassess. If it holds 30 even, we'll play it by ear. I want to see what the consolidation looks like. But that was a monster battle at this 33 level. It looks like the Bears, uh, for at least temporarily, have won that one. Uh, so I got to go to the other side of it. No flush just yet. Well, I mean... No flush, in, no flush, a second flush, I should say, uh, just yet in CCI. And remember yesterday, CCI put in a higher low and then made a jailbreak. It kind of feels like it's about to do the same thing here. So I was going to only add if it dipped down to $2, but if it puts in a long higher low here at about $2.15, I might just go ahead and get out in front of this a little bit earlier uh, and then get maybe like $2.15, $2.16, if it even at all possible at this point. But CEI, I thought it would give you a second push down to get some more long. For now, looking like it's a little bit stronger than I anticipated. We'll see. Yeah, see, yeah, it looks good. We, we're still having that same short, and it's just a lotto at this point for me, so we're going to wait to see uh, where it goes on that CEI trade. Palantir, again, uh, makes a move down to 30. Like, I, I just, I'm not averaging into this one. We're just going to have to hope uh, that this turns out for us, and I hate using that term hope because uh, whatever you're doing that, you're not in a good spot. Uh, so we're going to wait to see if that can come through for us. I hope uh, it does, and uh, we're, not, we're just going to wait on it. If, if it hits us and uh, we get hit on that, then that's what it is, um, and we're going to wait for it. So I'm going to get some out at 50 if we can a little bit down there to the downside. Thank you so much, Paul Tan, uh, for becoming a member. I mean, that, that means a lot to us, guys. Uh, anybody uh, part of our group is great. So thank you so much. Uh, I feel like we're the best trading community, and I hope we're doing a good job entertaining you guys today for sure. What's up, Rendo? Uh, this Renren, Ren, guys. Uh, Ren, R-E-N-N, is 40% uh, here. This is Renren, Ren, is a Chinese software company. Uh, just a heads up, 24 million share free float on this one. Not seeing headlines, though. Uh, the old no headline. We yeah, love the no headline. Look, you got to be careful with these ones when there's absolutely no news because the, the drops can be uh, pretty ugly when they do happen. It's actually holding the VWAP, but it's already back below the halt price, which is usually not a good sign for the bulls. Uh, so as long, the longer it consolidates down here, that's a jailbreak, uh, fail break at like 25 and an even number. Uh, so I'm going to check for locates on this, um, but you always got to be careful. Look, it's a low float like Brandon mentioned, so be careful if you're shorting it. Um, I'm probably going to take a shot at it at some point here today as long as we do have some reasonable locates. But uh, there's no, no one forcing you to trade the name just because you see it as a bit of a mover, guys. So I would definitely be trading that with caution if you are involved in it. I was on the bid here in front of VWAP on, on the firm. I, I will be on the bid again. But now it's bounced one time off 137, retested the high, and it's starting to fail again. So if I want to play inside of this range that it looks like it wants to put in a bit of a wedge here, uh, I'm going to have to get in front of that 137 to take some off. Uh, and then see if I can't rinse and repeat. So that's what the game plan is now going to be uh, on, a, on a firm here. Let's see what happens. It is starting to come back in. I do want to make sure that I can get some out so I can rinse and repeat it uh, as I go to check for the pay for shorts on that Ren. Hopefully they're not like a trillion dollars, but if it's more than one cent, I know one guy who wouldn't short it. Yep, exactly. Um, yeah, exactly. AMC right now, we are into that. We talked about that getting this trade before uh, we spoke or before we threw it over to Brendan there. Um, so let's see where we go from here, man. I mean, AMC, we have it. Excuse me. We took some out there just before 38 bucks. We took out about 12 cents or whatever it was, a dime there. Um, now we're going to go to the upside. We'll see if we can get something out here around 14 or 15, and then we'll auto-ticket the rest of them to the upside. So let's see uh, where we go now on this. I think obviously there's going to be some potential here uh, for an upside move now that we've broken out past some of these levels right here so that's what we're looking at we're sitting here at the upside this is going to be right now it's a 20 cent winner but we are expecting more as we just said so let's see if we can get something in the teens here and then hold the rest and see if we get that move that we're looking for to the upside right here on um, everyone's favorite meme stock here AMC uh, we haven't talked too much about GameStop lately I don't know if that's even doing anything uh, but AMC right now a nice little touch spot there I, I hope that's not the wick off top because I'm waiting a little bit higher uh, to get short here on AMC guy or to get out of some of the long on AMC. I can answer that question for you about GameStop. Yep. No, it is not doing anything. Yeah. Okay. It's barcoding. If that's something, then yeah, I mean, technically speaking, barcoding is doing something, right? Doing nothing would be no volume, but that's as close to it as you're going to get. 120,000 shares of volume and not moving, and that's what it's all about. But usually, look, it, it, it behooves you as a momentum trader or any kind of a day trader 
the second I even get a sniff that AMC is moving, am I going to check in to see what GameStop is doing? Of course you're going to. Like, it's just you have to. So I'm going to make a little bit back here. Like, I'm still going to be down on a firm. Uh, we'll make a little bit back, about 50 cents away from what I thought was going to be my first out. We'll take some in front of 137, like I said I would. Uh, and then part of patience is going to be only adding to this position if it gives me something closer to that 139 area that we got it before. So we're playing off that 140 area at the top. We've already taken our one hit on it. Let's see if we can make it back. I like the overall trend uh, that it's put in. Uh, fantastic one, but usually it's given back pretty heavily after a couple of days. And I talked about the reasons why I thought this could be it. And I did try it yesterday with no patience. Today I want to be a little bit more patient with it off the top here uh, on a firm. Uh, CEI 225. It's starting to slow down, but I want to. I, I kind of want that 230 level from yesterday to be the next out, right? Like 230 to 233 was a key level yesterday. You see me on the way down, get a bunch of shares out in that same range. That's why I was clustered there. Because the key level on the way up, I anticipate, will be on the way down. And there was a cluster at that price. So on the way back into the upside, you will see me cover this probably at like 31 or 32. And then look to reverse it once again. Right? Like I'd probably go from long to short in front of that 250. Although the second time it tests it, I might not like it as much. But we'll see what happens. Uh, so far, so good on CEI. But you don't want to get too greedy. If that was a, I was going to say wipeout bottom, but I got to say wick off. If that was a wick off bottom then pretty good chance that 250 is going to want to break at some point. Yeah, exactly. We'll just we'll, we'll hit it again here um, as, uh, yeah, we'll just go dap what it up for everybody on AMC because uh, there it is, another win for us here. Uh, I mean, you know, we've been cashing out everything today. It's been a good one. Uh, we're just waiting for that Palantir, of course. You guys are probably waiting with me for that. So hopefully that'll go. If the market goes, we can have that. But here we go. Uh, I mean, this is just making money back, right? I mean, this is why you don't, I don't just sit in one trade uh, all day. we got to sit here and trade for you guys. Not only that, it's how I trade anyways. Look, at different opportunities, right? So there's that 3785 break. We let AMC settle down. Thank you for bringing this to our attention that it came to the backside there. Take it, take it, take it. Um, and then there's an, there's an out. So I'm going to drop it now if it comes back down below this. Uh, and that's that. So we'll take it out uh, right there. That's 10 cents. And then there's 25 cents or something at 10, 3810. What am I long at anyways? Uh, as I see this, uh, we are long at 3887. So 13, yeah, 25 cents, 23 cents there uh, on that move. So we'll wait to see if that can come back out. Um, all right. So now we're not too bad on this. We're down 20 cents. We just took out a, what, what, what fill did I get there? Was that a 48 or what was it, 49? So we just got a 49 fill on Palantir. We were stuck long. I think it was, what, 71? So it's not good. Uh, it's going to be 20 cents hit there on Palantir, but we still think it has a chance to go. I did not average into that because, uh, you know, again, we're not going to die on a sword here. So let's hopefully Palantir can get back to the upside. And any kind of profits, like if we can get back to VWAP, man, and I can get this thing out for basically flat, I'll count that as a win uh, for Palantir, considering we have... 45 cents right now on four. That's a high move, man. We've crushed CEI. AMC now taking out the top. So, yeah, this is going to be a good day for me. We just need Palantir to get back to the upside, uh, and then we can celebrate that victory. So, so far, so good, guys. AMC, a nice run. Let's go. I mean, where are we going to get this out? We topped out right here already, 38.30. But, wow, good move up for AMC. Let's go, man. If I hit this button, normally it makes it go up. So let's go to 38.50, man. If we can do that, then we're going to get out of AMC 38.50. Um, call me diamond paper hands whatever the hell you want but right now diamonds i can sell diamonds for money so that's what we're going to do right now 3850 we can get that out we're going to do that on our favorite stock amc it's a great stock and why not i'm going to hit this one because we haven't used a, a crypto one uh, just yet uh, we're holding we actually made a bit of a pullback into the downside on bitcoin so i'm going to be watching that see we're going to be watching uh, si a little bit because i think it could continue to roll over but uh, alibaba is going to give you the structure of this trade uh, ccxi is working to the downside i just got some shares up but i'll get to the winner in a second uh, I want to get to this round off in, uh, in uh, Alibaba. This is my 15-minute chart. So the rollover is now on. Uh, we got the high of the day here at 161. I have a stop to cover myself. I'm not looking to get anything out, really, until we're testing yesterday's top. Somewhere around that 158 to 159 area if it does come back in. So this is more of a hold it a little bit longer type of... I, I could be in this trade a lot longer than some of the quick scalp trades that we're doing here uh, in Alibaba. And again, I love, I'd love it if it breaks 162. I'm actually literally long at 162 in my, in my own account. But you got to think about the, playing it in both directions. That CCXI, it started off poorly. Uh, we did take the hit. That's a daily. You don't care about that. We did, we did try that long in front of 33. Uh, I did reverse it to the short side. I got 32.74, so a little bit of slippage there. I talked about that 30 level in here. Uh, halfway through into 30, I'm going to take some off to take some profit. I did not take profit when, when this popped in the money. Uh, on the previous longs that I had, I will not make the same mistake with the short. So I'm going to take some out. If this were to break 29, 
I'm a little bit shocked at this, that it's actually never had a second leg in it. But if this were to break 29, when it had that monster drop of the concerns this drug back in May, it did catch a dead cat bounce that stalled at 29.60, right? You come over here and look at the chart, look at the chart this morning, and look at the pullback off of 20.38, and where does it hold out? At 29.60. Like, it's not, like, these things that happen on low liquidity in the pre-market, it's not a coincidence that when it fell, uh, when it fell back in May, when the dead cat bounced went to 29.60, and when it gapped up and ran here today, the dead cat bounced, turned at 29.60, resistance to support. Everybody is looking at the same charts. And when the lower the liquidity is, the bigger fish, the more they're apt to affect a turn like this. So if you're ever watching this, and I, and I wasn't even looking at, and I should have been, at 7.30 this morning, but if you see it bounce off a level like that, you could have grabbed 30. And that's a way better long than the one I had, catching the falling sword or wanting the 38 break. If you get it there, you got a risk level. Just the only concern is the amount of liquidity in the pre-market. So you might not be able to lever up on that trade, but it's just a decent risk to reward whenever you see that. And you can back it up with that 29.50 level on the daily chart. There it is, man. Slaying dragons left, right, and center as we are now out. Oh, that's not slaying dragons. Where's my slaying dragon one anyway? It doesn't matter. We'll hit that eventually. Uh, there it goes, AMC, man. Thank you uh, for that trade, guys. Uh, that was a big one for me, uh, AMC. We've had enough of this, man. We've had enough of this baby lily gagging around here, lolly gagging around uh, on some of these stocks. Big win right there for us on AMC. So let's get ready to rock and roll, man. Um, Palantir back, you know, now we're only down 13 cents on this trade. It did battle back, man. We talked about putting shares on right here. So let's go back to the upside. Hopefully we can get to VWAP. We have taken a little bit out here on Palantir. So we'll be red on Palantir today, but hey, man, not, not, not nearly as much. Um, you know, CEI was a good trade. If I can make on CEI what I lose on Palantir, I'd be super, super happy with that because we do have the other bangers on board for you as well. So, so far, so good today. Let's just hope that this can continue to march to the upside. If the S&P breaks or the NASDAQ breaks higher, then I think we have Palantir here. But uh, again, it, it's not a very strong stock. I'll probably get out of a little bit more, especially now that we're near VWAP. But let's go see what Brennan has to say. Uh, a couple things. NTRB just popping up here. A little bit on the low volume side. That's Nutra Brand Incorporated. So that was a mover yesterday, if you remember, past couple of days, I think. Uh, also, Best Incorporated. So we mentioned that Renren, Ren, which is a Chinese software company. This is a courier stock, also from China, guys. Best. Yes, sir. And uh, from I mean, China, you say? Bitcoin is continuing a, a slight slide. Like, it's down at 54,000. And we talked about how Silvergate was kind of squeezing a little bit here. So you guys talking about it. It's been a continuous move up. Now, Candidly, I will tell you, like I'm a, I'm a shareholder that has been selling, uh, been selling some on the way up here to, towards all-time highs, by the way. Um, but look what's happening at the top. It's, it's hard to imagine that you're not going to find some uh, resistance here at that 165. Now, if there were some levels to play off of uh, to the downside, uh, you know, it would probably be a little bit closer to the 150, 155 around here. I don't think we're at that point yet. But it, it, the notion that it puts in a higher, uh, I guess, another... Uh, higher low would make some sense to me. So you have a 166 higher low for now. It's turning around at 163. Um, based on the way it's trading, my gut tells me wherever I think it's going to turn, wait till the next level higher, and that's probably where it's actually going to turn. So I'll sit it out at this range and look for it to actually get up to this 165. But you know, given that you're getting a pullback in Bitcoin, this has really been a bit of a squeeze story. I bet you the short interest has gone above 10% on this. I would have to double check. Uh, but it was previously uh, sitting in the eight, 8 cent range. Right, uh, yeah. CEI is trying, it can't get through 230, by the way. So I don't know why I'm sitting here at 232. It can't get through 230, and I'm sitting here trying to get an extra 2 cents. And as I say that, it just tanked four or five cents. I should have been on uh, 229 to get the last of this out. Brendo, what's up? We were talking the other day about uh, 2014 levels on crude oil. That just got taken out. 79.39 was the high two days ago. Uh, we're up to 79.50, guys, on crude. Uh, at it again. Oh my God for crude and oh my God for Palantir oh God. as uh, we're finally battling all the way back. Congratulations to anybody that picked up that long. I told you that, you know, that's just not my style. I wasn't going to die on that uh, name, but uh, yeah, wait to the backside here. I thought, oh, I didn't, didn't get, uh, what, what did that get up to there? 50, 56. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're waiting a little bit higher to get out of some there more at this VWAP uh, and then hold. So right now we have gotten out, we've gotten out of 30%. So just to let you guys know, we've gotten out of 30% of our position, which we were initially long. I think it was 71 or 69, 68 something like that so this is um it's just the way it calculates our shared price um it, it, it's like first in first out so you know it doesn't give you a very very accurate uh 
read on what our proper pricing is uh, there, nor do you know our share sizes. So I'm trying to do my best here to give you guys an idea of what I have left, um, what, what percentages I'm sort of legging out of these trades in, right? So right now I am out and we've taken, not a bath, but we've taken a hit on it um, a little bit there because again, you know, we started to average here. These, these positions here, it was a lotto on that break of 24, hoping that we just mooned there, knowing that we'd have to average in. So this is, you know, these two positions right here are the real reels uh, because you saw the average price was 70. So right in there. So that, that should give you a little bit of an idea, or I think, I think it might have even been lower uh, than that. It should give you a little bit of an idea of the share size, but I'm going to take a little bit out more, maybe 10% more if we go up a couple more pennies, which here we come right now, and then we'll let the rest ride. So really happy with Palantir's performance here on the backside of this trade. So it's a, it's a bit of a day late here on Oracle, but look, I'm happy to see this stock continue to break out. We talk, I think we did... I think we've released this video already, talking about safe places to put your money. Look for relative strength is one of the things we've talked about. Uh, and as the market was pulling back in, um, you know, Oracle was still hanging on the top end of its range and now breaking highs. I took the breakout trade yesterday. I probably should have come back to the well today. I did not. You're going to see it continue to run. I don't have any obvious levels here, but I like Oracle. I want to buy it on any, almost any single dip that I can. I saw some people talking about Ocu. Whoops, that's the Oracle. I think it was Occugen I saw some people talking about in the chat. I don't see a monster move nor a lot of volume here. I know it's up a little bit, but uh, if there's something that we're missing about Occugen, then just uh, maybe throw it in the chat and let us know. I'm not really seeing too much. Uh, as I mentioned, there was a big seller uh, on CEI there uh, that would not let it get through that 230 level or hold through that 230 level. I was sitting above it like an idiot. I probably should have been getting some shares out the 28 range. If it comes anywhere near, like if it sniffs like the 25, I'll probably cover and then reassess what I want to do next. Because if it barcodes in the middle, I want to wait for the next move. It's still a bit of a pullback trend that we're seeing right now uh, in CEI, and I want to let that one work. I've got the reload. I talked about patience and affirm. The reload is at 139. I didn't take it at 138 half. I took it in front of that 140 level, but it does feel like I want to get out of this CEI trade because if it tests $2, it's like I would have given up you know, the chance to take 15, 20 cents on the last of this one. And I do want to work back into more shares long, but that's got to be down closer to that $2 level. So uh, shout out to Valeria. Hopefully you're enjoying your trip. She's not with us today. Um, and then uh, she'll be back on Wednesday. But shout out to Laura. Thank you for watching the chat. Um, and memes and movers oh, yeah. still on, right? So memes and movers coming back with Trader Prad uh, at 11 o'clock. We do have an interview to come uh, as well. So uh, big things today for us, for sure, as uh, we're super, super excited uh, for everybody as Ford. Nice move to the upside here uh, today as well. And I hope everyone has a great weekend uh, coming up. We're back at 3 o'clock for the big show. Memes and movers at 11. Uh, wow, smile direct, man. Congratulations on that one. Oh, you were okay. Uh, anybody that's been on SDC lately, uh, you guys have been pounding the pavement on this on the chat. So uh, again, a good one for you. Or Let's go, come on. Uh, for any of us on Smile Direct, I'm not in this name, but wow. A nice move off that $5 bottom. You, I'll show it to you on the 20-minute chart here. Um, sorry, it was the $6 bottom here. Last couple days, as soon as we broke that here, it sort of held back six, so it held six uh, on the sixth. It held six yesterday on the seventh, and then today you get that little bump back up to the upside, $7. So Smile Direct Club right now coming into an area of a little bit of concern. I think if you're lucky enough to get this thing to eight, then that might be an, an indicator for maybe you decide to sell it. So watch out for Smile Direct coming through here at about eight bucks is not a horrible level there for SDC. So if you're long, that would be a spot to look out for. We'll talk about this talk, I think, a little bit more in detail when we come back from Brendan over at the big screen. What? Hey guys, yeah, small cap time. A uh, bit of a quiet morning so far on uh, the small cap side of things. The CCXI, if you can believe it, uh, it is a highly priced stock for a small cap, but it does fit uh, the bill. Uh, I was long, so there's that. Uh, 34 was a bit of a level. Uh, the first time it pulled back, once we retook that, a whole bunch of volume came pouring in on the buy side, uh, and this thing ran up $3. So that was uh, just before the open, actually. Once we failed here at uh, 35 and a half, uh, I took a quick scalp there down to 33 and a half, uh, got away from this. This was obviously a better trade down to 31, but uh, was busy. My apologies. Uh, let's move on. Uh, DAT. Uh, I like this one just based off of what it did at the same level yesterday, uh, early in the morning, uh, which ends up being a pivot in the pre-market here, 890 to 9. Gave you a quick flush off of the open down 50 cents. That was really all I did. I mentioned this EFTR uh, at the open. Uh, that gave you a nice flush uh, down to 1220 as well. There was a retest of 14. I wasn't watching when that happened, but that would have been a great uh, spot to reload. Another $2 move followed that retest, guys, for EFTR. Back to you. 
EFTR. So, uh, another one that Brennan brought us. Whoops, that's a still smile direct. Another one that Brennan brought us here, and uh, it was a late mover. It's that Ren. It's now double topped here at 24 and a half, working right back below that halt price. And once you look, you put a double top like this in, uh, you're working below the halt price. Uh, I'm going to start moving in the other way. Believe it or not, we actually have free pay for shorts here as Alibaba just stopped me out. So I'm going to be out of a. This is Alibaba. Well, I shouldn't do that because I'm happy Alibaba's going up, but the day trade's not going to work out for me. This Ren, it's going to turn to short. We actually have free locates. I just assume we didn't because of, the, because of its uh, float and liquidity, but we actually have free locates here at Day Trade the World for this name. It has got to be both a short off the whole price and a breakout long if you do that 24.50. I would caution. The reason why I don't necessarily want to just automatically take a 24.50 break is because 25 is a nice round even number, and a lot of times that can be a really painful fail break, so I'd almost look for the 25 to have to go here instead of 24.50, but it is an all systems go short in front of that 23 half. That was the halt price, and is just barcoding with the volume absolutely dying in front of it, and that's one sign that I usually like. Uh, so I'm gonna get on this rent if I get an opportunity to. We'll see if I get the fill or not. I'm still not out of CEI. I don't know why it doesn't want to pop. Uh, any further, but you know, I got to see if I can't get out of that shirt, uh, get out of this one. If I am going to reload, it is going to be closer to two. Uh, Sundial still not doing anything. Uh, I'll, I'll show you guys. Sundial. Yeah, sure, go. Sundial's basically holding the bottom. Let's go. Uh, it's holding the bottom here at 69. I still have the original entry in front of 74. It hasn't really popped very far. It hasn't oh, really shit. fallen any further. So it's a good win. Like five cents in the money in a 74 cent stock is fine. But Sundial, when I used to trade it, it was like a sit in it. If you had it right short, you were basically sitting in it all day long and just watching it fall. And I feel like that's what's happening again today. Um, I was just talking there because I do think that there is uh, an opportunity here on Smile Direct, but it looks like you have to pay for short. Smile Direct right now uh, at $7. I just tried to short it right there and, and missed it. So uh, Smile Direct right now falling to the downside here. Um, we'll see what happens now. But SDC, uh, is it a NASDAQ stock? Yes, it is. So SDC, I just have to request it right now um, and see what this is going to cost. I think it's going to cost like a penny a share. It's not a huge uh, opportunity to short. Uh, I don't think it should be a huge pay for short. Yeah, it's too... How much? Two cents, so it's oh. it's fine. So uh, two cents, so we'll accept that, and uh, we'll now be able to short it. Hopefully, in a couple minutes uh, here or less than that uh, on a f on a firm on Smile Direct. And again, just bouncing off seven. I mean, I, I don't know. It, it coming up here, bouncing off seven. So this is a good opportunity to try to short this name, uh, Smile Direct, off that seven dollar level. There is room to the downside, obviously, uh, as you can see there. So Smile Direct short at seven. If it breaks it, then we can always punch the long again. So um, well worth the risk reward here on SDC. So let's start to build this position here into seven dollars on smile direct guys so i will say this everyone and their mother is probably is well i mean anyone that's shorting a firm everyone and their mother just reloaded at 140 here so i'm probably not alone in that the last time it took this is the last time yesterday yesterday when it ticked past this level it got up Whoops. here got to 140 like 90 or so couldn't break the 141 so the idea of a, a reload in this price is probably on a lot of people's mind that does crowd the trade which does mean if it breaks out it can get a little more violent uh, so i would watch out for the top here in a firm it's it's, it's gonna be worth saying this uh if i go to the daily chart the other way it's gonna be worth saying this on a firm um, if we do break out from here, just keep in mind that you have a 147 all-time high, right? So uh, 147, if we break the 141, could come into play. I'll obviously bet the other direction. It's kind of weird. Like Alibaba, I go against my book, and I've gone against my book here in a firm as well. So we'll see what happens. But a firm screaming into the high, I didn't, I'm still not out of CEI. And CEI is really starting to fall here. So I mean, you know what? I'm just going to get out here in the T. This is actually ridiculous. I shouldn't have let it go all the way back. Now it's like a five cent winner on CEI, but it's really starting to fall. Uh, CEI, Camber. And I do want to get back into this one uh, to the long side. And as I say that, give me a break. I was sitting on the bid, I was sitting there and couldn't get a fill. And then, of course, always cancel other offer first. I actually reversed into the short that I don't want. So I'm just going get, to get out and pay the spread on CEI. Okay, always so cancel. yeah, um, that was, uh, you know. Not very long lived, uh, the SDC short. Uh, short, 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 and then out. So um, we are back a little bit short now at 02. Uh, waiting to see if that wick top there is gonna mean anything at 711. Uh, if it breaks through 711, then obviously we'll be uh, you know, hitting the dirt uh, road there on that one because this is going to be, um, you know, again, just crushed there. We paid a little bit, two cents per share. It's not, this is not gonna be a big hit, but we are waiting for 711 to hit. Uh, if that does come through or you know, doesn't come through, uh, then we may be in bigger trouble than we think. 
but uh, we'll wait to see here as it coming back to the downside. I have a bit at 96 here. That may have just been the fail there on SDC, so we can make this all back uh, if it does come back down in the mid 90s. So right now, Smile Direct, we're trying it. We'll see if it can come back down here. Uh, Smile Direct does make that wick top there. We should always wait for that. But again, if I'm not in this name, then I don't really see these things, right? So unfortunately, cost of business here, we do take a little bit of a hit. And uh, this is what trading is all about, man. You, you throw some darts uh, and you see if they hit. And right now, we're going to go short SDC into that top right there. And we'll see if it can make sense uh, here on the downside. So that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, Palantir, lucky, sometimes, you know, Good to be lucky, lucky to be good, but we're using VWAP there uh, as our savior. So we are now out of, it's still not that much, 45% uh, of this trade. We're out of 30 there. We took out some more as we got up to that VWAP. So just being completely transparent on what I'm doing here for you. Um, that is that trade on Palantir. So we'll wait. I'm still thinking we can break upside, especially if the market can go. So Palantir right now, all good. Come on, SDC. That's me, man. I'm at, not, I thought I was bidding 96 right now uh, to take this money back in. I guess I'm not. Got to put a bit on here, SDC. So I'm going to do this. Oh, it's going to sound weird. Uh, I'm going to do that for a firm because it just uh, took out that top, but it wicked the top at 141 and then came right back in. So, I mean, that's a setup for a re-entry, so I'm going to take it, but that's me on a firm today. Uh, and then Ren just broke down. We talked about this one, again, double top, uh, sort of below that, below the whole price there at 23.50 or with technically 23.40. Uh, same difference. I'm just rounding in my head. Uh, and then it gets right down to that halt low, uh, that's going to be 22. I'll take some shares off of 22. I just want you guys to see what like the thought process behind. If I'm taking the cons consolidation as opposed to shorting it off the high, like the first out's going to be you know, the pulse halt bottom. The next out's going to be between 20 and 21, wherever it happens to slow down. Uh, but just going to jump back over. And, and now finally out of CEI, by the way. I am looking to go long CEI, but that's way closer to $2 than 213. I started at 211 last time on CEI. I think this time you just got to... You almost have to wait this one out. Like I'm sitting at 04. Uh, let's go to CI on the, on the 15 minute chart. I'm sitting at 04, but below that $2 is a gap to like 180, 185. So this is a dangerous level uh, to be playing in front of. There's no holding beyond two. Like it's air below $2. Uh, so I will be very, very careful uh, at trading in front of it. You know, I prefer on an even level to actually hit the bid as opposed to have a stop order, and that's the approach that I'm going to go with here. Uh, but here comes a retest on a firm, which does mean if it fails through the high again, it'll be a reload. If it breaks the high this time, if you do a wick off top, uh, if you do a wick top uh, and then come right back wick to it. Wick off top is fine. I'm not going to let it break that. that high. The weird thing is we've been joking around about it, but I looked it up. It's an actual thing, like that Wyckoff yep. or whatever. Like yep. It's a real thing, like sure. the wick off top bottom or whatever it is. You look it up. You can Google it. It's a thing. So I don't want to use it in the wrong, in the wrong way. Um, so we'll just go... Oh my God, because I just wish we would have held on oh to this my God. stupid smile direct in the first place, guys. Um, and then we wouldn't have to worry about this, but uh, we'd be up money instead of flat uh, on this name. So uh, right now, smile direct, you know, we're short at 02s there. And uh, we were short initially at, you know, I think it was 98s, uh, got hit there at 06. So, you know, we're just trying to make, I mean, we're back in the money that 10 cents there. We've been scalping it back out to make some back. So we still will be negative on the name, but I, I, I like where this is going, hopefully. Um, and that's going to be smile direct, hopefully now uh, fading off off that wick off top uh, that we talked about there. A firm heading to 142, wow. Um, let's check out what our, yeah, I know it's off, right? Let's check our AMC right now, uh, 38.17. So that was our last out there. It looks like that was gonna be, or that is gonna be a good out uh, on that name. So, so far so good on that. One thing that we haven't talked about, and I should uh, tweet this out probably. I mean, I don't know how many times this is gonna happen to me, but the very top on CEI and the very bottom on CEI today. So again, I wish that was my max position and that was my max position, uh, but it's not. I mean, that's you're gonna get these moves when you scalp like us. So, you know, that's just, just looks funny there on CEI. We're still holding that, you know, a short position off this level. So I don't think we ever retest back there again today. We may do uh. that, um, but for right now, we're testing down back near two. So, I mean, a break of two pro probably brings us back down to here and uh, maybe some halt fest nation at that point. So we'll see what happens with this one. We still are positive today. Um, so that's a good name. That's a good sign uh, that we are be being able to make some money here today. And the main reason is because of this stock where we'll mic drop on Ford, man. We've been long Ford for a while and it's really nice to see it breaking out finally over the last couple of days along with its uh, brethren there, Ford. What's up, Brendo? A uh, couple of uh, things, guys, coming up in 15 minutes. First off, it's 10.30 already this morning. is flying by. Uh, we are thrilled to have Biomind with us today, an interesting play on the psychedelic space. Uh, this is a company with 
multiple U.S. patent filings already uh, by Q1 of next year, multiple IND filings with the uh, FDA as well. So we're uh, thrilled to have, uh, again, Biomine coming up uh, in about 15 minutes. Stick around for that, guys. Absolutely there, and that's always going to be a good one. Uh, when we do, uh, this this ran is starting to form. Look, it's it just bounced off of that support like support level, I'll call it, like loosely a support level. It just happens to be the post halt bottom uh, and put in some volume when it got to 22. It's already bounced one time, but it can't get back above VWAP. If it can't break VWAP before, re before breaking 22, I'm actually adding to this position on a, on a 22 break and then start thinking about covering it 20 to 21. Uh, sometimes you want to, not to pile in on it, but... Look, if you get a move like this and you start thinking about how big the gap is going to be and the fact that it okay, just double topped okay. it, uh, can't seem to hold this level and bounce too far away, then I'm going to jump into it. I'm still looking for that bottom and CI, but I'm being patient. You know, like I said, I want that $2 level. I, it's, not that I'm, it's not that it has to be $2, but I want it close to that price. Like last time, the second time it tested a dollar, it went from bottoming at 106 to bottoming at 103 and then breaking that one, uh, that $1 mark altogether. So I want to make sure we're very patient with the CI bottom. Uh, that CCXI, it's continuing to very, very slowly move down. Uh, so we did reverse it, lost on the long trade, reversed it into the short. I should have been taking profit on the long, I never did. Uh, reversed it to the short at 33. That 29.60 level is a big one. That was the one on the daily chart, also in the pre-market on the pullback. As it gets towards there, I would anticipate there could be some consolidation at that 30, 29, uh, 50, 60 to 30 even. So I'm going to definitely cover some shares in front of it. See if we can't get out. There's always a breakdown trade that you can continue to take if it does want to go. Tesla has, I mean, Tesla got away from us a while ago. We, we, liked it. we like the idea of a short there. It's like the one I don't get is the one that goes. That's usually how it goes. But it is showing some signs of getting off the bid. Now, the, the market's flat overall, and Tesla, like we said, is relatively weak. But that doesn't mean that it can't catch a bit of a bid here. And we like that usually that 787 to 790 area. And if it can consolidate there, you know, around this level here. And again, you're going to see what it looks like. Uh, this is 787 to 790 when it broke up on the rumor yesterday, right? So it basically consolidated all lunchtime and then made a 790 break. Uh, then you're going to see in the pre-market, 790 is the bottom. So if it does the same consolidation, I don't think it's going to break out and go to 805. I think that's crazy. But if it does give you a 790 break, it's probably an easy scalp for a few dollars at least. But I want to see it barcode a little bit. Show me some consolidation especially with the market coming back in. If it can finally make a bit of a bottom, that would be a good sign for Tesla. So just looking at the pattern from yesterday and then trying to rinse and repeat. It's even put in this same, relatively the same low right around 783. All of that does mean if it can't break 790 and the market turns and holds red, hate to tell you guys, but 783 could be a bit of a bottom break in Tesla. Just watch for history to repeat itself first, though, uh, because it can be an easier trade if that happens to happen. Happens to happen. Happens to happen, yeah. I just said uh, Yeah, that makes yeah. sense, I think. Okay, uh, Okay. so uh, what's happening here today is, again, going to be another positive day for us, but Smile Direct right now, we just took some out at 99s. Uh, there it is starting to come back to the upside, so we're going to watch out for that break of 710. If that does happen, uh, we are going to be out of SDC. Um, you, you brought that up today, uh, Brendan, about oil retracing all the way back to the upside uh, this time, as oil's been on a nice little run uh, lately, that's for damn sure, and so is XOM. I mean, look at what XOM is doing today up 2.69 percent we talked about the enterprise or their basically their market cap uh their value right now isn't very high considering oil is at you know seven year highs so uh, there may be some value to be picked up in xom every single time it dips down i've i've been selling like i put on some puts last time we were up here and able to cash them out we talked about that uh, that was a good trade for us and i'm thinking about putting them on again right now you know oil runs and there's no doubt about it and you know now it has momentum to the upside but again you know sure everybody knows winter is coming and everybody knows that you know oils i mean it's just game uh, of thrones yeah uh, yeah i didn't watch game of thrones but i do know what you're getting at um but the, the, you know I amused myself the point yeah that's a good one uh you know the point is though is is that you know like is this too high for now? I mean, is oil, I know XOM is trying to revamp some of their, um, you know, dealings and whatnot, getting into some clean energy as well. But I just think that this is a, too high for XOM. I still feel like you fall fast here. Let's see what, I mean, just like we've gone up fast, I think we could fall fast. So this is going to be an area right now where I think we can get some puts um, and, and take some uh, XOM. Look what's happening right here, though, uh, with CEI, guys. We are retesting uh, these oh. bottoms again. So there might be something down here. For this. There might be something down here again. 
again, like near this two bucks, like, you know, you pick it up and you try to ride it back to VWAP at least, you know, 220, something like that's a 10% return right there in one day on CI, 10%. We're just talking about C, uh, XOM moving 10% in a year. Um, you know, this CEI right now may, might do it again in one day. If we touch two, you may come back to VWAP, so watch out for that. I'm holding for a $2 break, but um, it is getting exciting down there. I'm kicking myself over, uh, over Oxy because, you know, one of the things that we were talking about before when, when, when the, there was that, the last spike, I guess last week, uh, was an Occidental. Um, it had this, apologies for these wicks there, but uh, 3360 uh, was a bit of a top and we shorted in front of it and it was a great level. And then on strength, uh, on strength like we're seeing today in the oil market, it gives you a breakout and a breakout through that 3360 straight to 34. Like that is a, that is a low hanging fruit trade usually if you have a good short and it, and it even continued like the mistake that i made that day was getting out way too early it ended up only being like a 50 uh, 60 cent winner or so and then flushed and then continued for a couple of days before reversing and now you're going to get a breakout off that same price screaming into it so 30 for, 34 on oxy i'm probably not going to um, touch i just added to ren by the way remember i said i'm going to add if it breaks 22 well it broke 22 so i added to that position instead of taking off I'm going to do something. You guys can think about what stock we're talking about. You ready? Okay, so here we go. Uh, we'll put up this, and then this should be a good indication of what stock we're talking about. There it is. There's the smile. Look at Smile Direct. Hells to the yeah. Bang for Smile Direct, man. There we go. Yes, sir. We talked about shorting this one. Now the cash comes flying through on Smile Direct. Look at those outs, man. 84s, 85s. We talked about shorting that. We did get blown out the top, but then whenever that happens, that's when we notice that wick, and we say, you know what? You know, again, revenge is the dish best served cold, and there it is right now. So we take that out on Smile Direct. We still are holding a little bit right there, but a good trade uh, for me on SDC as it just falls right back down. You know, you take an eight cent hit. We talked about that, and then there we go. Short 702 out in the 85 ish. So that's 20 cent winner. Well, 17 cent winner there. Look, it could still fall more. It could rip back up, but we'll empty some out down there to make sure we put that on the board um, and uh, take a little bit of profit on that one. So, you know, we're still, we're only going to have that one loser on today, which is crazy um, that it's Palantir considering that we've had AMC rocking and rolling again, right? Oh, AMC, we, we got touched in there. That's not a big trade, but we did get touched into that 38.50, so we're going to have to watch out for that, but that's a big winner today. CEI is a big winner today. Do we have to even talk about Ford? Um, and then the Qs, man, big time win on the Qs today. Bang, bang, bang. Huge win on the Fords, right? Um, and then Smile Direct still rocking and rolling. So, so far, so good today. I keep hearing these mixed messages, but I think Brennan's ready over there at the big board. Pretty mixed today. I like this board, actually. Let's see what the top left is all about. Yeah, definitely pretty mixed. Uh, good way to uh, describe the market so far today. We are positive, guys. Only just 0.09% for the S&P. Uh, top left here for you uh, is energy. So it's all about energy stocks so far today. All of the energy group in positive territory so far. Banks are doing well also. There are a few that are moving lower uh, in the diversified group, specifically the individual insurance companies and the banks themselves, all positive so far. But a uh, big move back, as we said, 2014 highs once again today for crude oil. That has the entire group of the energy sector in positive territory. Uh, over here are the automakers. So GM, Ford, uh, BWA, APTV, Tesla uh, as well. Tesla flat now, uh, down 0.09, uh, but it was a lot more obviously. Uh, but worth a note, uh, automakers having a nice day. It's GM, 4.5% for GM. Everything else, pretty red. There are uh, some mixed movers over here, communication stocks. Uh, CHTR down 4%, Netflix up. 1.6%. Fox, Fox A having a good day as well, 1.5% to the upside. Tech shares pretty mixed as well. Uh, some of the hardware equipment makers and software makers in positive territory, but being offset. Industrials, consumer, uh, discretionary shares, and consumer services, all negative. So a few individual movers to the upside, guys, offsetting an otherwise negative day. And yeah, look at that. We are now red on the S&P. Back to you. Oh, wow. It doesn't even, doesn't even give you a chance to get out. 
that's crazy. I, I can... Let's go. We'll put the gates of hell. I, if you, if you're probably talking about CEI, so we'll just put that stock into the gates of hell. And your boy talked about that one, man. Taking that through $2, possibly getting a big, huge flush there. So there it goes, man. I mean, just straight to the downside. We did not, we didn't, we didn't take the two bid, of course. We talked about possibly watching for a flush and then a halt. So uh, we'll see what happens here. I don't know if it's going to halt. It probably will soon, um, as this is a big move to the downside here. And there it goes, man. Just cat just, just collapsing uh, there to the downside what a big win that is 56 cents now in the money uh for that let's just hope the same thing can happen wow look at this man just this is insane just absolutely falling this is what cei does so this here we go it, oh i thought it was gonna halt there a little bit it is still going to the downside watch out for cei camber energy back to 90 cents maybe someone says they're on the chat i don't know about that but right now camber falling to the downside and yeah we have this it, oh i thought that was a halt spot right there camber energy falling down like a sword so uh it's gonna be, I can't really describe uh, too well what just happened there, but I, I took the long in front. I'm telling you the slippage was all the way to oh. 192 to get out. Um, I basically hammered it short for everything. For, I basically hammered it short 91s and 92s down there. I've gotten most of that out now. I'm actually gonna hold on. I'm, I actually just have about 10%, well, uh, about closer to 15% left of it. And I kind of want to hang on to it, if not get more on any kind of a pop. So. That was insane. You don't really see that hop happen very often uh, where you get that big of a move. Like, I was sitting there with my that finger on, on the trigger at two even, and there was just no chance, right? Like I told you, like it was literally like the mid-90s at absolute best. But you were, there was lots of liquidity in the 91, 92 range, maybe even all the way up to 94, although I did my best fill was probably 93 to get that short. Now, it looks like 180 was the bottom. Now... 171 to 173 was a previous level on the stock, so it did stall shy of that. I do think it tests that level after a flush, capitulation flush. I I'm now probably going to short every single pop in CEI for the rest of the day, uh, at least until 171 breaks and blow that 130 as a key level. I, like I said, I only have of that crazy move. It's all in one minute on my one-minute chart. On that crazy move, I was able to hammer it to get out of that last short trade all the way from 187 to 180. I am going to go load up short in front of $2 if it gets there, and I'll probably short it all the way to view up. Capitulation candles like that after a double top, again, you almost want to play into those if you can. While that was happening, by the way, CCXI did break that 30 level, so in all that excitement, uh, that's now $3 in the money. I'll probably sit in this one all day long as well because it's absolutely falling like a rock guy. And apparently, uh, thank you, Dominic. Sometimes these squeeze stocks will move at the same time, and it looks like Grom, uh, looks like Grom fell off a table as well. So this is when CEI made its first flush, a lot of the names on Sympathy all got crushed at the same time, so be careful. Look what happened in Grom in the same moment. Thank you, Dominic, for the super chat and for pointing that out to everybody. Yeah, I'm going to get a little bit more out here on Palantir. This day is getting a hell of a lot better for me. Um, that CEI trade, guys, like what, you know, that was just... You know, great, great trade there on the, I mean, I didn't even notice it or I would have hammered the $2 short as well. But I mean, that just felt like a rock and I was like, holy crap. Um, but you know what? The other thing too is that we're also making a lot of cash on too, guys. Smile Direct, 24 cents now in the money on Smile Direct. Like you're going to talk about going one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to go five for six today um, with big time winners. And then also uh, this Palantir that's sort of just been sitting here. We just took some more out um, today. We're, we're going to be, we're going to be, very positive. I'm almost at the highest spot I've been at all day here. So, so far, so good. But obviously, we wish for a little bit of a better take uh, on Palantir today. But wow, CEI, Smile Direct, Ford, also a monster winner on Ford today. So let's throw it over to Brendan now with our guest of the day. All right, guys, thanks so much. Yeah, we're thrilled, as we mentioned, to have BioMind Labs with us and Alejandro Antelich, who is the CEO of the company, joining us to give us an introduction. Alejandro, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, we appreciate your time today. Uh, give us an introduction here because it's an interesting approach to this space in that this company is, is more science-focused. There's a wide range of uh, disorders and problems that are being targeted. Uh, give everyone an introduction to Biomine Labs. Thank you, Brendan. Exactly. We are a biotech uh, company, but moving very fast uh, in order to become a pharmaceutical company. So, you know, in the psychedelic space, uh, there are many angles in order to focus on. And in our case, given that we have been working with psychedelic substances since 2006, we have all the required experience to move to the next level, to the pharmaceutical level, in order to register novel drugs 
and drug delivery systems. So from this perspective, as I told you, even we are a very, a very uh, young company, we have a past, we move on safe grounds, and that's why now we are advancing on a very fast way. And, and a very specific difference here that we need to touch on, Alejandro, and that is the company's focusing on fast-acting treatments, which sets Biomine Labs apart uh, from other companies in this space. Tell us why. Exactly. So why fast-acting psychedelics? First of all, we are the first company in completing a, a randomized placebo-controlled trial on a psychedelic substance for treatment-resistant depression. So this is gave us, uh, I believe, the, the most what we need to understand from a psychedelic substance. So this was in 2018. So from there, we have been working on research and development on our own uh, formulations, understanding that in order to delay, develop new uh, pharmaceutical drugs, you need to understand the combination between three uh, variables. So here we are talking about those, about road of administration and indication. And in this case, given that we are focused on affordability, because you know we are treating mental health conditions, uh, which are, uh, I believe, even worse than any pandemic or epidemic that we have faced in the past. So in this case, in order to get affordable treatments uh, in order to give a democrat democratic access to most of the patients that they need this kind of medicines is that we are focused on fast-acting psychedelics. In this case, tryptamines, NNDMT and 5-MeO-DMT. So the most fast-acting uh, molecule, psychedelic molecules that you have in the market right now. This is a relatively young company uh, still, but uh, just to run through a couple of facts, and I, I teed this up earlier, Alejandro, but uh, the company is set to end 2021 with 20 new patent applications uh, in the U.S., uh, three phase two clinical trials already approved, and we haven't even gotten to the most exciting part, which we'll leave to the end, Alejandro, but tell us about these patents that uh, the company has filed. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, our neuroscientist, Dr. Draulio Barros de Araujo, was the person in charge in conducting this first uh, clinical trial. And as of today, the only uh, clinical trial on a psychedelic substance for treatment resistant depression. So from there, uh, we understand how we start protecting our novel pharmaceuticals, our novel formulations. And that's why is that uh, even we we become listed on the New York Exchange uh, just on, on July this year, we are advancing very fast on these uh, patent applications. So we are uh, targeting to end 2021 with 20 patent applications submitted, but real patent applications, okay? So we are submitting patent applications in uh, US, In we are submitting under USPTO, we are submitting PCT patent applications, we are submitting uh, uh, applications under the Convention of Paris. So not just to say, okay, here we have three, four, 10, 20 patent applications submitted that at the end, it made no sense because they will not be granted. Our approach is to work on solid basis, solid pillars. And that's why through all the uh, scientific evidence gathered from this first trial, we are moving very fast, protecting our uh, inventions. But on the other side, from the clinical perspective, as you said, we are going to complete 2021 with three phase two clinical trials approved by the ethic committee. So this is a big achievement for a very young company. Indeed, and I think it's worth reiterating. Uh, and let's go into 2022 now. Q1 uh, 2022 is planning on having uh, not one or two, but three IND filings with the uh, FDA for those wondering investigational new drug application uh, filings. Tell us about what those will be specifically. So uh, maybe something that uh, your audience uh, needs to understand is that we base our work on a psychedelic substance called ayahuasca, native to, to Brazil and, and South America. So ayahuasca has 
a lot of benefits for the health, for the mental health. So from there is that we have been working very hard understanding the combination of what uh, I mentioned before, those uh, road to administration and indications. So, which is our target move to US, okay? United States is where we need to be, where we need to uh, start completing our next phases in order to register our novel pharmaceuticals. So we are going to uh, be submitting three INDs to FDA, uh, probably in, in Q1 2022. So this is uh, amazing for us because at that moment we will be uh, having our formulations, our novel formulations under stability studies. So in order to move forward. In this case, we are targeting two formulations based on NNTMT. So the main psychoactive ingredient from, from Ashawaska, where we have uh, all the evidence uh, that we need. We understand everything about how NMDMT work in our bodies, in our brain. You know that at this moment, uh, we are talking here, you and I and everyone uh, has NMDMT in our brain, in, in, in our brains. So it's amazing what we can do with these novel uh, formulations that we are going to submit to FDA through an IND in 2022. So many, many things are about to come in 2022. We are a game changer in the industry. We don't put all our coins in the same basket. We minimize the risk. But besides that, the molecules that are in our portfolio are the right ones. So there will not be any mistakes. So uh, happy to have as many, as many uh, people joining our journey because it will be a success for sure. It's an exciting time and uh, important work uh, worth saying. Alejandro Antelich, CEO of BioMind Labs. We appreciate your time, guys. Uh, BMND, guys, the ticker, if you're looking for it on the NEO Exchange here in Toronto. Thank you so much, Alejandro. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. There we go, guys. BioMind Labs, BMND is the ticker. Okay. Yeah, a, little, a little Canadian content, and uh, with only five minutes to go, we're going to get to the, the madness of CEI. Of great course. space there, by the way. It's a great mean, space, you know. and it's an important one. And we like, and we love this. We like the story, and it's just um, we have a lot of Canadian content on the show. Obviously, we're here, and uh, wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving, which we haven't done because it's Canadian Thanksgiving. This like CEI. Is we could also wish them happy Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving as well. Is it Thanksgiving is actually Monday or is it Sunday? I, I think it's... Well, I mean, the holiday is Monday, but it's on Sunday. Isn't it Sunday? I think it's Thanksgiving Monday. Was it Monday? I, you know what? I don't know. I should know. We're Canadian, Somebody but we, cele we celebrate U.S. Thanksgiving because we trade the market. I'm just glad that we have U.S. Thanksgiving because then I can watch football at home. I know you're going to talk about uh, It's CEI. always the Lions when you... Um, I don't know. The Not Lions the always end up playing... Which is always it's the Cowboys. Is it Cowboys? Uh, yeah, Cowboys too. Always playing. Pittsburgh Look at music. Smile Direct. Go over CEI See, because look, I'm long right now, 183. CEI went absolutely nuts. Uh, so I shorted one night, like I said, in front of $2. Shorted 195 all the way down to 175 I took a short here again, 190, 192, 193 uh, Started scalping it out. And I'm just going to keep rinsing and repeating as long as it gets to that 195 level. But I'm telling you, it went from... Like this stock went from like my my best stock to instantaneously like red on it to my like top stock again all in the span of a couple of minutes and the volume which I didn't think it was going to get to a billion today I thought there was no chance because the volume was tapering off since that move kind of feels like it might try to do it again so CEI we might as well call us uh, Camber TV because you just can't stop this thing it's a lot of executions I went from a few trades to like 65 executions in a matter of like five or six minutes, maybe, well, 10 minutes now on CEI. I just can't, you can't stop this thing. It's, it's easily, easily uh, the sexiest day trade in terms of opportunity the yeah. last, this last week. And there's nothing really touching it, really. And, I mean, the ideas that we've had on CEI today, man, I mean, we absolutely, uh, it, this has been basically a perfect, oh, you know what, this, uh, where's my, um, you know, Street Fighter. And when we have that, um, here it is, Street Fighter. Ryu. I'm a Ryu guy. I don't know if it means a lot of people probably. I think if you're a real Street Fighter player, you're choosing, you know, Ken or Ryu. But, you know, if someone wants to challenge me with somebody, uh, well, hopefully we'll be able to do that when we get back going. But anyway, CEI here today, we talked about it. It's all, it's all over our sticky note, man. I mean, someone told me even on, and, and you know what? I'm going to let, let it be what it is right now because we talked about this earlier on. Here's CEI. Congrats to all the longs. First of all, man, you guys should have cashed in early today. And, and I think a lot 
lot of you did. So good, good job on that one. But 250 short. And then I said, we're not going to touch this thing until three, right? So, I mean, today right there off the sticky note, we only had three ideas on there. Um, look at this, like just an absolute move to the downside right here on CEI off that 250. This was my real trade of the day. We did take that plus that. Our average price was 38. So, I mean, to be that's pretty good. And then we just, that's our last out, by the way, at 90. So that's a 55 cent winner on a $2 name. So that's 20%. Um, and then you're going to go back down to the downside right now. And then we went long right there at 185 or 183 once we took that spot. So we didn't bottom pick here at all because, you know, I thought it was going to halt anyways. I don't know, don't know why it didn't. Uh, but uh, we'll go to the downside now. Then we pick that long up right there at 183 and then, you know, get that right back. So we're at the highest spot we've been at all day today despite Palantir. I mean, this is the thing. So here's Ford. 60 cents in the money. We're still long from down here. A 14.80 or 15, no, 14.85 call there on that bid. We talked about why we wanted that into yesterday's um, teeth. And if you check out yesterday, look at this. We were trading this name yesterday, right? Here's 14.85 right here. This is yesterday, all afternoon. We were shorting up here and buying it back. So we got the opportunity today to buy 14.85 again. We were like, sign us up to that one. And now we're still holding 20% uh, of this move all the way to the upside. So that was been a good trade. Um, AMC has been a good trade today. CEI, we just went over. Ford, we went over. Palantir's has been a problem. There's no doubt about that one. This is going to be our worst stock, our only negative stock on the day there. The triple Q's. We absolutely destroyed this call all the way to the upside. We hold that last 5% and get that out for flat as the market comes right back down. And then what else do we have to talk about with Smile Direct? I mean, you smile, I smile. Fail at $7 there. We'll stamp that one to the downside and Smile Direct right now. We're still above the UOP right here. We've been cashing it out. Um, still holding... 20% uh, of this name. So we're going to wait to see what happens to the downside. But I think I'm going to take another piece out right here as we are at VWAP, which does make me a little bit nervous, Dan McIsaac. Uh, just, uh, just for you guys that are still trading CEI, uh, an iceberg, a refreshing order at 190 has just been broken. Uh, so the momentum looking like it might be turning again uh, to that downside. I'm going to be covering, you know, I, I, I took some shares on the way down. So my last entries are actually worse than the 95 that we have. So my last entry was about 91 and a half. I got a bit of a midpoint order. I still want to give that to 95 if I can. Uh, I, I see you there. Sun Hans Mrak. Hun, Sun Hans Mrak, I should say, asking about Tilray. Uh, we got a question. Look, we got a question about Tilray. Load, there we go. Load, load, there we, yeah, there we go. We got a question about Tilray to end the show in yesterday's action. And uh, basically all I was saying for the person, that, and if, you, if it's the same person, I apologize. I, I'm not sure. I don't think it was you who was asking in the close show. Uh, and you were asking about, can it go down to 1050? All I simply said was, I'm assuming that you had that, that short off the high of the day. And, and did you have a chance? I said, yeah. I mean, look, it's, it's, a decent, it's a decent notion. I don't ever do anything overnight. We're day traders here. But if you had it here off that high, 1145, 1150, yeah, you're minutes. seeing it continue to slide to the downside. It has to break this level. I do expect it's going to have support at 1050. But it's well on its way. It did a fail break at 930. Uh, well, it did a fail break at the open, I should say, uh, trying to get through that high at $11. It's usually a sign of weakness. So we'll see what happens. 1050 would be that support if it gets there. Uh, so still plenty of day for that to happen. Only about 30 seconds to go. And we, we don't have Miss V here. She's on her vacation, and we wish her the absolute best. You're still going to memes and movers, by the way, uh, with Trader Pratt. You might just see us step in a heck of a, a little bit more uh, than we usually would in Miss V's absence. So uh, we usually do what, what National Day it is. I don't know what it is, but w without Miss V, we will not be doing that. We're just going to be what? sending you. Well, not, are we? Do we have it? I don't, I don't know. know. We should be. We should, we should have it. I don't know. As far as uh, I know, I no, one's say, told me, no one's told me that we have it. So, Well, we should. No, we know. Um, we should. We should. So, but okay. uh, we will. We will hey, here's what's going to happen. I just want to say thanks to Sam Troy, first yeah. of all. Like, at, at Sean Katina makes our family hella cake. Okay, well, I mean, the cake, you know, I like, um, what is it, red velvet cake and things like that. But uh, if you're talking about cash, then uh, we will throw that around as well. Um, and thank you so much for your kind words there, Sam Troy. I mean, um, some nice super chats yesterday. And I'm super, super glad. Uh, don't tell Neil about SDC. He will short us. I don't know. I mean, I'm short SDC right now and just cashing in, man. Look at this SDC play right now. Like, we're short at 02, guys. This is 27 cents right now in the money. So fail there at that seven break on SDC and nothing but love right to the downside. I know Trader, Trader Prad uh, is sitting there waiting. So um, any, any last uh, 
cause for concern there, Neil, or anything? No, none at all. What I, what I was what I was gonna say is, no matter what, we're not gonna we're not gonna leave you hanging with the national day because I know you guys love it. So we'll just come back on when we go to Pratt here, just Google and it. we'll come back on. We'll find it for you and we'll bring it to you because it's always fun and it's a Friday. Uh, but we do need to get to uh, memes and rumors. It is time to see Trader Pratt. What's up, buddy? Hey, I'm your host, Trader Pratt. Welcome to Memes and Rumors. Sadly, no Miss V today. Uh, I was gonna help you guys out with the national day and I have it pulled up on my stream here So uh, I'll, I'll pull it up here. I'll show you my screen. So it is the national pierogi day uh, So hopefully uh, we have pierogies for lunch and usually we have pretty good pierogies coming in from our uh, From our caterers. So it's national pierogies day but So throw it back at sure it's chick Slow down, Brad. Today's lunch is chicken wings. So uh, National Pierogi Day, let's go. Um, I'm a fan of pierogies. Uh, Neil, can you throw it over to Neil now, Brad?